Dreaded flag, a vengeful sea. Be careful what you say. There's always someone listening. The Dutchman tossed on the sea. I swore, and the devil heard me. Now we're doomed to sail the seven seas for eternity. So yo, let the ocean. The line forever we must flow. We sail through them, cursed and condemned. Yo, ho, let the ocean winds blow. A sinister grin across his face said, "You'll be doomed to this place." 
place The devil heard my oath Shame of my boast Oh, a ghostly ship from the depths Freedom from fear Is the only gift of death Yo, let the ocean your eyes you'll join us like those before we're an omen of the ocean night when you see the flying Dutchman it's too late for your soul to the waters we gave now
All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me start over. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah, yeah, can you hear me now? They can hear you. Okay, let me make sure. I want to see what they say here. Dude, we can't hear you. He said, dude, we they can't. can hear you now. They're just, they're, they're behind for like a yeah, couple good seconds. Good now. They said, okay, would you just relax? Chill, dude. Okay. Just, just be there. Well, just, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, just be there. Okay. Let the audience talk because they don't know. Let me don't... do my job and, and, and you do yours. How about that? Tell this guy to shut up, please. Please. Go ahead. Stop acknowledging me. Acknowledge someone them. in the comment section, tell this man to so, shut Someone it. tell him to ignore shut me it, and shut give his attention to y'all. Shut the, shut the mouth. Stop paying attention to me. Shut the mouth. Start, start flapping so your here, here, here. Would you be quiet? This guy's talking over me, folks. This is a hater. Go ahead. I live with a hater. Talk this to them, not me. Hating. It's always hating. Uh, here, here's what we got, folks. We we we're, we got to go. We got to move. That song that was just playing. Uh, yeah, Tyler Jones. Stop arguing. We're not arguing. We joke. We mess with each other, dude. This yeah, is you must be new here, Tyler. It's we okay. treat each other like this. This is. <laughs> Look at what Jet Sewell said. How, how many years have you guys been married? Well, that's very progressive of you. Okay, well, that's, yeah, that's very disgusting, too, incestual and, and gross. Look, um, no, it's just when you've been dealing with somebody that's smart mouth like him for all these years, you know how they are. My brother, you should see my brother and me. You think this is bad. Now, me and my brother, we, we've actually fist fought about, what, four or five times? Uh, probably, at <laughs> least. <laughs> we've, we've thrown blows on each other, bro. I'm telling you, man. Uh, my brother was, the, the thing I always worried about with him is that right hand. If, if he's got one one thing he can do, and that he can throw that right hand, if he if he catches you flush on the jaw with that right hand, I, I will admit something. I'm man enough to admit this. Maybe not now. He's getting older now. But my brother always had a harder right hand than I did. I was not I was not one of those one hitter quitter guys. Typically, as I got bigger, older, and stronger, I I learned to just throw one punch and get it over with. I could do that. But I was more of a machine gun puncher. Like, I punched you mo more times. Like, he would throw that right hand, and he would just lay people out. And that's what he did. That was his thing. Not so much my thing, but I, I would usually set it up with a jab. I come from a boxing, kickboxing uh, stand-up. Yeah, D's more like uh, Gimli, but, but not short. Yeah. Him and Squid, they would throw those right hands, and that was it. I mean, and if they caught you flush, that was it. So if they, if they were in your face... And my brother has been in my face and said some things. We got into it one time. We were remodeling the club. And we came to, luckily, we just ended up in a wrestling match. And he hit me, like, right in here. I, I, I'm not joking. It was like for a week I felt like I, my, and my bell was rung. Uh, you got a hard right hand. Um, but more often than not, I won. So was, when we were kid, we were younger, like, that's different. You're a kid. It doesn't count. Those, those don't count. Uh, but love him to death. We don't fight like that anymore. We just argue and snarl, and, and he gets mad about things that aren't relevant. And he gets mad at inanimate objects. And I'm probably making him mad. <laughs> He's probably mm -hmm. listening, going like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see him in here, though. See if him and Scorpio are going to join us. We need some moderators in here. We got Maddie. We got Sugar Britches. So I got a lot to do. We got a lot to talk about, a lot to unpack. What we got to figure out right now is where do we start? The song that just played was The Bear King, almost 8,000 uh, views on our Paranormal Sound Table on YouTube. If you want to buy the song and download it, it's on iTunes, right? Yeah. Okay. iTunes. Uh, it's on iTunes, Amazon Music, Apple Music, and Spotify, and uh, what's the other one? YouTube Music, if anybody uses that. so. Yeah. Uh, and, and on just YouTube itself. But YouTube Music is a separate thing. So what we're doing right now, uh, our... our Subs are moving pretty quick. We're, we're, we're moving, we're growing, we're getting a lot of watching hours, a lot of minutes. Um, people are paying attention to us. That's good. That's a good thing. And uh, so and so that's what that's what's that's a good thing. I'm happy. We're almost at 34,000. We'll be at 34,000 probably middle of next week. I'm not joking. Maybe even by Tuesday. So we're moving very quickly. And these are real people, not a bunch of bought bull crap. This isn't, this isn't fake. These are not fake, made-up, AI-generated stories. These are people's encounters. What? Now, we can't testify to the veracity of their statements, and I'll say this again. I say this. These are people's encounters. If somebody has a thread, though, it, it's, it's, it makes sense to me. Now, a lot of the stories that we get, and I said something about this the other day, and I'll tell you how it works, just giving you a little uh, insight on this. People will usually, it's not, it's not always the listeners. They'll have a story, and if you're an aspiring podcaster, and I said this to the guys on my show the other night, you know, if you get a story from somebody, 
What you need to do is ask them if they know anybody else who has a story, especially if there's somebody who has a similar story, because that's where you're going to get a lot of your stuff. A lot of times it's the listeners who say, hey, I know somebody and these people have never heard of my show, which is, is a good thing at times. And, and they, they don't know what to expect. And so they just tell me, look, this is what I saw. I saw this flying creature. What do you think it was? You know, uh, well, sounds like a vampire. I don't, I don't know. It could be anything. But, you know, the descriptions match, you know, legends and stories of something that, that flies around and, you know, <laughs> drinks blood. Or it's a gargoyle, you know. So we kind of put the label on that. Now, when we first started getting these reports of these weird flying humanoids, we didn't know what to make of them. And Anthony, you remember we sat around with Armando and Tony scratching our heads going, like, what is that, you know? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> some of these, and then we started getting more and more and more, and we started throwing them into these one-off files. Then you realize when you got four different people building email reports, then you got a bunch of, bunch of the same stuff in the one-off file. So one day I went into the one-off file and I found like four reports that, I mean, it absolutely had to be the same being, the same, not the same exact one, but the same type of being. And slowly over time, your whole, you know, ideas and perception, everything changes and it becomes like, wait, wait a minute, where, where, what are these things? Where do they come from? I need to do more research. And so over the past five years, I've probably read several hundred books, and that sounds insane, but it's the truth. And I've read tons and tons and tons of people's work. And I had to go through and watch some uh, YouTube and some other videos and figure out what, and then reach out to these people. And at first, they don't really want to talk to you because they're like, who are you? I don't know you. So you give them a link to your show, then they'll hit you back up. Luckily for me, about 90% of them did. And then they said, hey, we like where you're going. We like where you're at. Um, I'll tell you what I know. And you strike up a friendship, a conversation with them, and the next thing you know, you're friends with the guys or gals, whatever. So that's how it kind of started. Like I would, I would message these people asking them for information. Now, once I was able to, uh, I don't know, say cut a deal, but make a deal with the guys from the NADP that we help each other out and we share information, then everything took off. Talking to guys like Albert Rosales, uh, Martin Nunley, of course, you know, you talk to these people and you start to build a network. You start to, you know, hey, we're all going to share information. We're all going to work together. You know, I'm not going to hide anything from you. If you want something from me, you want to talk to my witnesses, let's do it. Let's do this. And so Josh Inocchio, he's another one we made friends with. Uh, Steve Stockton, there were several people that we um, we hooked up with and we, we got stories from them and we shared information. We went back and forth, spent hours and hours and hours on the phone with these people. Uh, David Weatherly and I have interviewed countless people in Central Texas. When Aaron Deese wrote his book, like I said before, we didn't even step on each other's toes, man. We talked. It was like, I was like, you got that, I got this. And he wrote his book and I wrote mine. And it was like, we didn't even, he interviewed people that lived a couple miles from each other. I'm not joking. And uh, we never even stepped on each other's toes because there was so much of it. So much of it that I didn't have to poach witnesses and neither did he. And so, you know, that's kind of how it goes. That's how it evolved. That's how it turned into what it is. Um, there's a couple things I want to talk about. We're letting the chat get filled up here. I wanted to answer somebody. I believe it was a young lady who, or maybe, maybe an older lady. I don't know. But it sounded like a, a younger person with, with the verbiage. But I can't find the freaking comment. And it was either on the werewolf story. It was about the werewolf story. But it might have been the vampire Q&A or the vampire story. One of those two. I say story, it was this, these guys, in their, their whole life, basically. It wasn't just a bunch of stories. Um, well, it was stories, but it wasn't just, you know. So, she, she anyway, the, the, I, I couldn't find it, and I, and I was going gonna to screenshot it, but, folks, I was so busy today. I didn't have time to do anything. Um, just a quick overview of what we were going to talk about uh, encounter-wise. But uh, she, she made a point. She made a point, and I want to address it, and I want to tell you right now that I took into consideration what you said, ma'am. Uh, I believe it's a ma'am, and because um, you know on eBay and uh, eBay, YouTube, they, they mm -hmm. the, the names, the handles, you never know. But I think it's yeah. a, it's a female. Um, but I want to say she said that, and if it's a, if it's a male, I'm, I'm I apologize, whatever. But here's what what they said. They said that you said during the interview that you didn't necessarily like what the guy was saying. And so you didn't put it in the show. See, now here's the problem with that. I don't, I don't do that. 
they said, oh, this is what DC does. You know, I'm not going to say his name. And I said, look, when I set about doing a show, take my word for it, I know more or less what can be said. Because some of what they were saying I didn't necessarily agree with because I needed to do more research on it. And since then, I have done a little, but not enough to sit here and say, oh, I figured it out. I, I, I know exactly what they're talking about. I think these men are more knowledgeable than me. when it, cause I, I wasn't a, in this cult. I don't know about it. I don't know. But let's not get it twisted here. What we're talking—I need a haircut, folks, believe me. Um, but what we're talking about, though, is two different things. Now, maybe I made a mistake when I talked on the shows or something. I didn't have a chance to go back and look at it. But there are certain things— that we cannot talk about on YouTube. And they gave me a lot of information that fell by the wayside. Why? Because I can't repeat those things on YouTube. So their opinions of certain things, they were not facts. It was their opinions on certain things. And once again, I could not repeat those things on YouTube because some of it was... Um, uh, graphic, you know, it was, it was, um, and, and here's where it comes in. To, one of the, let, let's start with, with, uh, with Gerald. Okay. One of the things that he told me, and I'm not going to, I can't say it, but he was talking about their sexual things that they do. He was very open about it and very blunt. And he said that doing things that aren't even fit for animals, that's his exact words. Um, and I said, yeah, I've used that verbiage before, you know, very similar, but he said it in a different way. And I said, well, I can't say that on YouTube. I can't, you know, he goes, well, I think you should. And I disagreed with him. I said, I, I, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to do that. And he said, no matter how hard the truth is, people need to hear it. And I said, I agree. <clears throat> but if I say those things, I repeat those things, then it's going to be offensive to certain people, to some people. It is, I mean, it is necessary at a certain point to leave certain things to the imagination when it's not absolutely imperative that you articulate every detail of, like, whatever sick, degenerate, perverted things that the other are doing, you know? Just use your imagination. And whatever you imagine is probably worse. Yeah. And, and so there were things that I had to tell him that I was not comfortable saying on the show. Now, he, he, he believes, this is Firefly on my shirt, by the way, um, from G.I. Joe. So if anybody asks, you, know, you see who it is, uh, let me take a look, because everybody likes to see the shirts. Not everybody, but I, people that message me and say, hey, I want to see your shirt, whatever. Um, he was one of my favorite characters in G.I. Joe. But, you know, it was hard for me to listen to some of it, um, You know, I get the whole point about, you know, it, it, you needing to tell it in its entirety. And if we were on a different platform, I would have. But YouTube has terms and conditions. They have a, a TOS, term of service. And I think that if I say certain things, I'm going to be in trouble. And some of the things that they said I didn't agree with, philosophically. Um, they're Christians, but they think that things should be told the way that they, you know, and I, I told them, I said, there's only, there's a limited, I mean, I can't, there's a limited of things that what I can say. I'm sorry. I can't, you know, so let's not, let's not get, let's, let's, you know, I just wanted to answer that, that text or that, uh, that message that was left. I didn't take it down. Cause I'm, I'm not the guy that takes down the comments. I rarely do that. I'm not the taker down of comment guy. Even if it's blasting me, I use it. I just leave it up there. These guys, my wife, they take it down. They're like, get rid of it. Yeah, if I see it, I just, uh, I just take it off. Jamie says, how does Rumble work? Yeah, it works it, it works the same way as YouTube. I mean, it's 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 basically like the, it's just a video platform. Um, and it's got some, uh, it, it's not as, as uh, strict as YouTube. I mean, of course, you still can't go on there and just, say whatever you want willy-nilly, you know, I mean, you can't go on there and say illegal or, you know, blatantly disgusting things, but the, um, I don't know, uh, Rumble, I, I've been slowly uploading our, our episodes to Rumble, I think I'm, like, on episode 30, 
something now. It just it, it it's a slow it's a slow process. It takes forever because it, it used to be that that if you wanted to transfer your or copy your channel over to Rumble, they had an automated tool that would just automatically import all of your stuff and organize it for you. But then YouTube cut that off, and so now that tool doesn't work. So now I have to go back and uh, upload all of our uh, archived episodes one by one, like each video, wait for it to upload, which takes like 15, 20 minutes per episode, and just sit there and wait and make sure it's all cataloged correctly and it's in order. It's just, it's going to be a while, but uh, we should be going live on uh, on Rumble here pretty soon. We we were kicking around the idea of transferring the Saturday live stream, which is like the UAP Alien Agenda Project over to Rumble, because there's a lot of stuff pertaining to that topic that will probably get demonetized or at the very least some kind of in trouble with YouTube if we talk about it on there. We talk about too much of the real whatever. Yeah. But it's just the same thing uh, as YouTube, just not as strict. Here's what I got to say. Um, somebody uh, said that that was a hoax. That what we talked about last night, um, not a hoax. Not, I'm sorry, not a hoax. The thing about a very large fast food chain finding DNA, human DNA, and then the guy was like, how could this guy talk so openly about it? Because they don't care. Okay, they talk openly about it because people like this person that commented, and I'm not bashing you. I think that you're being a little bit naive. I'm not trying to be ugly or mean, I promise. Um, that's what everybody says when something comes out. They're like, oh, I looked this up and it's a hoax. You could look me up and I'm a hoax. You could look up you and you're a hoax. You could look up the, any, anything. It's a hoax. Because... They're going to tell you that, that that's a hoax. That's the quickest way to shut anybody down. I have literally looked up newspaper articles. And what happens is it never leaves the local areas. There was one in Oklahoma City, right? It happened in New York, upstate and in the city, right? These things happened all over the place. It happened in Kansas. It happened in California. It happened in Oregon. It happened in Utah. It happened all over the country, Florida. Here in Texas, they find this over and over again. And then there's a guy who's long since deceased. Thank you, April and Mojo, for that donation. Remember, folks, we are trying to get money for equipment. We need to redo the equipment in here, and we need to redo the equipment that we're. We need the equipment period just to go and do the the stuff we got to do out in the field. So everything we're getting this month, we're going to put it toward getting nice equipment. Also, the gear that we need to go out and do the things we got to do. I'm not planning on being like, you know, Adam Davies or, you know, <laughs> Greg Ogles and those guys, Helbin Holler. I'm not doing all that. I'm not competing with those guys. All I want to do is explore some things that need to be explored. And I'm going to do that. It's going to happen, just like the documentary, just like the board game. And we do, th that's what we need to. We need, uh, I don't know how much we need to get the board game started. It's thousands of dollars. But everything we get right now, I give you my word, every penny we're getting right now is going right back into the show. It's going back into the show so we can produce more content and do, do more for you. This isn't as simple as just talking to people on the phone and then repeating what they say. Because in order to do this, you have to have work. There's a $4,000 computer below me, Right. That's what you have to, unless you want crap. Yeah. You know, we have to have mics. We have to have cameras. And this, this, that camera there is man, man, I got to. Pissing me off. I got to upgrade the computer at home. Yeah. The computer at home so that we, whenever something happens, we can go live from home at any given time. Mm -hmm. That, that camera sucks. I fight with it. And then when I wanted to go live on Facebook the other day, it's like, are you sure? Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> You know, I had a Dodge uh, truck for two days years ago. Not now. The Dodge trucks I got now are great. But they used to have the Magnum engine, which ran great in a Dakota because the Dakota was a Tinker toy. But you put it in the Dodge uh, Ram, you push the gas, and it was like, oh, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I, you know what? I want tacos. Can you take me to – what is this? I'm arguing with my truck. Can you please go? Can you please? I took it straight back to the dealership, and I said, I don't want this. I don't even know why I bought it. Well, it was because my dad pressured me. It was his his mistake. He dumped it off on me. 
I had it for two days. I took it right back to the dealership, and I got another Chevy. I said, I'm done. The Vortec is so much better than this crap. So, you know, anyways, there's a lot that we need to get to get done, get going. And so we appreciate everybody who donates. We appreciate the Patreon supporters. Like I said last night, somebody messaged me and asked me if that was true, what I said about the Patreon. Yes, we haven't had a Patreon member in three weeks. So, yeah, we need to catch up. We need to be able to get what we need. And people can say begging. Well, I don't give a crap what they say. I'm done worrying about what people give a crap. I don't, I don't care what they say. We need to get things done. Okay, and we can't flip the bill for it right now because we're trying to do other things. So that's what that's what's happening right now. Uh, Miss Miss Shodi, thank you for the camera computer phone. We need that. Um, on at the house, we need a new webcam at the very least, a, a decent one. Yeah, well, I mean, like that that that's actually considered like high end for a webcam because webcams they don't really go beyond that so we should we should just get it like a camera camera for that one that's what i mean we need yeah. to do something besides what that is that is yeah. not that's that thing is not it sucks <laughs> just being honest lucky is for going his dog biscuit please put this towards your camera phone thank you lucky we appreciate that anybody who donates we appreciate it greatly um hopefully we're gonna have our good friend come down here and start working with us and once she comes down then she can start helping us get organized and get all these dang mail offs done. So uh, I charged Anthony and Tony with doing the mail offs. Well, guess what? The emails, now I know why it hasn't been done. I told them on Monday. And Tony is the worst about communicating with me about things like this. So it didn't get done. So we're going to try and push hard to get it done tomorrow. So that I just keep telling you. But it's been one thing after another. We had an electrical issue in our storeroom. And then when we had somebody come and fix it, then some books went missing. Uh, and don't you hate these? Because you don't know what else is missing. Now we got to take an inventory and try to figure out because we don't know exactly what's what. We don't know what all we're missing now. This person could have taken a lot more than what we see. And I don't, I don't know if it was them or somebody that came in. They left the door unlocked because it was unlocked. Um, so somebody could have just walked right in here and thank God they couldn't get back into this room because this one has a lock on it too, or they could have been, they could have stole all of our equipment. So I'm just, I'm not in, you know, that's, it's, it could have been bad folks, but by the grace of God, it didn't get any worse than from what I can see a few books and maybe a hoodie. So, you know, the books though, that's, oh boy, you got to go back and let me call everybody and buy some more because that is a problem. So, you know, I hope they enjoy reading those books. It's the first time I had a bag full of Linda Godfrey books that got stolen at my friend's nightclub. They were in my truck. They broke the window, took my book bag, and uh, stole a bunch of books. And unfortunately, Linda's books were in there. She's gone. I'm never going to get the, you know, I have a few left now in, the, in here in the studio, and I'm never going to get rid of those. But she can never, she, you'll, she'll never sign another book. That's it. And uh, pray for her, 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 you know, her ex, her uh, w widower, uh, Steve. Um, her birthday just passed, you know, a little bit ago, a few days ago. Hmm. I'm sad. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, folks, there's a lot of people that need prayer. Yeah. A lot of people that are suffering. I was gonna say, if if, if we can ask for prayers for one of our moderators, uh, that you, yes. you see her in the chat all the time. Her name is Spilling Tea for Spunky Sparky. Mm -hmm. She uh, she she's just lost her mom. And I believe she just lost one of her one of her dear pets, so she's going through a hard time right now. That that's why you probably haven't seen her in the chat. So let's just lift her up in prayer as best we can. That's all we can do. Okay, so we got it all out of the way. We got everything said and what needs to be said. Um, you get the situation. You understand what we're going through, what we're dealing with. I'm not up here asking for, you know, money to go buy jewelry. Okay, I'm not doing that. I can, you know, that's not what I'm doing. What I need is equipment and we need to get this done. And I'm trying not to dip into my savings, which I've already cut it to the bone. And one of our people is going to need an operation soon. So I need to be focusing on that and that's to help him. So anyways, at least what the insurance doesn't cover. We got 400 people. Here we go. Used to, we could wait 300 people be like, oh, let's start talking. And people start showing up, and it's like, and then you get up to six, 700 people. 
which I'm not saying we're going to hit that, but it might. And then those people are, they don't know what's going on. So it's kind of waiting for 400. Now here we are. So I got some stories to talk about to you guys, and it's going to be, uh, I, I can't tell you, I'm excited. Something really weird happened to me this today or last night. Folks, the first time in, in a long time, I went to bed at about 1.30 in the morning, which is very unusual for me. And what I'm about to tell you is my own story. I'm going to start with this one. It was very odd, very odd. But then it got even odder because, odder, <laughs> it got even odder. It got even cute little furry mammal that lives in the river. It was, it was worse than that. No, it was weird. My wife wakes up, and I'm already in my study. And folks, I am already having a, an, an anxiety attack. I am freaking out. I have been buzzed all day because of this. And I haven't even told you, Anthony, what uh -uh. happened. Nellie's the only one that knows right now. Um, but, you know, let me tell you. I had a dream. Now, when you have dreams, there's dreams, and then there's something else that you know seems like a dream, but it's not a dream. And I'm getting, look at this, you can see the hair standing up on my arms. And I'm going to say this too, and I'm also going to say it kind of as a warning to the beings or being, whatever. Um, don't do that again. Because I really believe that somebody did something and something came into my room. I wake up in this dream and then I realize I am still asleep. Like I woke up, but I was like, I'm in, I'm in this out of body state. Mm -hmm. And I look up and I like, first I was like, I'm awake. So what gave it away was that I went to grab something off of the dresser and I, my hand like went through it. Now that's not freaky enough. And I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Anybody makes fun or wants to go, whatever, do, go ahead make fun. Do what you got to do, but you'll be booted. You go to the comment section that or whatever afterwards and you make fun, you're going to get banned permanently. You will never be allowed to comment again because I'm opening up to you and I'm going to tell you what happened. And this is the truth. I'm not joking or I'm not playing. And this is a warning to the people who may be considering trying to do more. What happened to your friend can happen to you. This being looked like a man. Now, I've had Bettina on the show, and she talked about this being that looked like... Uh, in fact, message Bettina and ask her to come to the chat. Okay. Tell her, hey, you wanna, you're going to want to hear this. She talked about a being that she called the jackal that looked like this creature or entity from the movie... Uh, thir is it 13? 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts. I want to make sure I got the number right. I haven't seen it, and you only saw it once, and it was years ago. I'm, you know, I, I watch horror movies with my wife, and then she's scared. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not a big horror movie guy. I think I think it's just, I don't know. I, I'm really not a TV guy at all. I don't have time for it. I just don't have time. People are always like, did you watch this show, that show? And I have to pick and choose because I don't have a lot of time. I do not. I'm currently catching up on Resident Alien, which is actually it's a pretty good show. I like that. I like the actor, Alan Tudyk, because um, he used to like Firefly. Just like the guy on my shirt, probably. <laughs> but uh, so here's what happened: this this guy is leaning over me, and his face is pale, pale, and he kind of like makes this kind of grin. I don't know how to convey it to you because I don't look like him at all. And he had fangs, big fangs, and his mouth kind of protruded outward, and he came down like he was going to try and bite me. And so I thought, oh, crap, you know, when my hand went through the item to defend myself, and I thought, okay, this is not, I, I am not in my body. So this guy, I don't know if he's real. Well, not that he's real. I see he looks real. But I don't know if this being or whatever it is is a flesh and blood right now or if it is in a spiritual form, because I'm thinking it has to be in a spiritual form because I can see, like, all of his feet, everything looks, you know, whatever, but he, he couldn't, I don't think he got into my house. He would have, it would have been hard for that to happen. 
And he would have had to go through several locked doors. I was like, how the heck? Well, not several, but a couple. And my dogs would have gone crazy and started barking and making a bunch of noise. And there are several people around. And we have an armed guard that's in the front. So, I mean, you got, you got, you're going to have to go through all that. So, I don't know how this would have happened. And so, I'm thinking this is probably not a real, like, a, not a real flesh and blood, but it's a spiritual entity. So what I did, I reached up with my right hand that I just had just gone through the physical objects and I grabbed his throat as he was coming down and I thought he's going to bite my body with those teeth. He's going to bite my physical body. And when I tell you this, I'm looking, I'm not joking. This is not haha funny. This is not, there's no punchline to this. This is what happened. And then I'll tell you about what my wife, and so... I look over, she's asleep and I'm like trying to get her attention so she can jump up and like, you know, whatever. But my hand can't awaken her because I'm out of my body. So I came up out of my body more so like up out of my body. And I, I learned lunge toward this entity and I grabbed it by the throat and I wouldn't let go. And it began to try to struggle with me. This is what I did. And, and in the dream, I've done this before, and not the dream, it's out of body experience. And I've done this multiple times, and I've, I just start doing it. And I started saying the Lord's Prayer. It seemed to help because the, the more I struggled with this entity, and we went through the dresser. So I know that this was me fighting him, and of ultimately him coming down onto his knees, and he was like holding on to, 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 my, to my waist. And I was overpowering him pretty easily, too. It wasn't that hard. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't like I was fighting for my life. And uh, I just kept, uh, kept the grip on him. And I said, you're not going anywhere. You know, this is, you're going to end here. This is where it ends for you. And I said the Lord's Prayer, and I said it again. And then I began to rebuke him in the name of Christ. And at this point, it was like he was melting or something. There was nothing to grab onto, and it was like, it, it was weird. I heard this noise on the other side of the room, and I turned and I looked, and it was kind of, of a distraction, like a whistling, whipping sound. And I went toward the bed to see if Nelly was okay, because I thought there was some, there was something else there. I don't know what, but I didn't see it, and it like went under the bed. And then I look and I see what looks like a snake type thing wiggling out of the under the door and leaving, like it was that entity, the one that tried to bite me. And then I look under the bed, and then I get up, and I hear the door slam, and then I wake up, and I'm in my body, because it woke me up out of my body. Uh, so that, you know, I, that was rough. I mean, you know, I woke up, and, and I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, and then I was awake, awake, and, and so Nellie wakes up briefly just a little bit looks at me asked me i think she said everything okay or okay i gave her the thumbs up and i just went to the bathroom washed my face and just you know went and did my routine i went and used some listerine and got my mouth clean and did everything i was supposed to do went to my study and i sat there for about an hour just contemplating on what had just happened and then i began to have a full blown anxiety that turned almost into a panic attack and i just i finally went back to the bedroom and Okay, so I went back to the bedroom, and Nellie was there, and I don't want anything to happen to my wife, and, I'm, and I love my wife a lot, and I, you know, and um, I told her what happened. I was like, I just fought something. I don't know what the hell that was, um, you know, but I'm really tired of this crap, you know. I'm like, I'm sick of it. There's something coming to my house, and so she got up, and she says, I just had a nightmare that there, you know. So she had a dream about something that I remember dreaming very similar. And I, I think I've talked about it on the show before. And it was about this uh, blue, these blue type creatures. And now the dream that I had, I had years ago when I was doing a bodyguard job. And uh, it was when I was doing a bodyguard job out in Steiner Ranch. Now that's it's a little bit south of where I live. Like I live in, in one area and Steiner Ranch is south of me. And so... 
I, I, I fell asleep on this couch. Um, and I just immediately, I think it was like a remote view by accident, you know, like I didn't try, it just happened. But I was, uh, I was at this facility. Uh, this was years ago. This was like 2003. I'm just emotional. Like just when something comes at you like that. I don't know, man. That was, uh, so, um, I, I showed up at this facility and there were these blue looking creatures. Now you tell me this isn't a synchronicity. This is weird. They had tails and they had horns like a ram. And one of the stories I'm going to tell you today involves one of these, which is even more bizarre because I did not tell, I told you about the goat man thing, mm -hmm. but I never told Nellie. So she had a dream and I'm not going to get into her dream, but she had a dream about, you know, what, something similar. It was one of these blue beings with horns. There was a, a, about, I'd say, uh, four or five rows of them, about six deep. You know, like, 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 uh, or I'm sorry, six rows of about four or five of them each. I'd say about 30. And they were doing this weird, like, dance. They were moving side to side, like, and there was this, like, rhythmic dance. And then there was this, like, drum-like noise coming from their mouths. This wasn't tonight. This was 2003. And I think I've talked about this before. And it was, it just, it freaked me out. And I wanted to get out of there so bad. Because I was looking at them through the fence, and then I caught one of them's eye, and it just started staring at me, and they were doing this chanting, and I could see guards, like human guards, standing up on these in these towers, watching them. And, I, and it was like in some Latin American country, because I heard people speaking Spanish, you know. Like, and I looked down the fence, and you could see these other guards, and they're turned facing them, watching them, and they got their weapons kind of pointed at them. And I, I started like telling him, I said, for some reason, I just, I don't know, it was 2003, but I instinctively knew, don't let them do this. Like, you know, like stop them. You're, why are they out in this yard doing this? Because this is some kind of ceremony and they're doing something. And these dumb people were allowing them to do it. And I looked around and you could see like there was like a clearing, but then there was like jungle around, you know. And I'm like, where am I? And so I started walking over there. And then I realized, like, it was so real, I thought I was walking. I thought I had been, like, transported to another dimension or time or whatever, you know. And then I realized I was coming up off the ground when I walked. So then I, I knew that I was, this is, you know, I'm remote viewing out of my body. I don't know what this is. And I went over there and I tried talking to these people. And when I, when I tapped one of them, I tried to get his attention. He just kind of went like that and looked back. Like, he didn't see me. And so then I guess I would have been like a ghost to him or something. And I'm trying to get their attention and I'm, they're speaking in Spanish and I'm telling them, don't stop this. Don't let them do this. What are you doing? It, why are they in this facility? I have no idea, but you can't allow this to happen because whatever they're doing, they're summoning something very bad and you're all going to be in trouble. But they were out there doing it, letting them do it. And they were becoming more powerful. You could see this light at the base of their feet, which were hooved. So it was a very weird uh, a dream. And then the next thing you know, I wake up and I'm, you know, I'm a young guy. I mean, you know, this is 21 years ago, you know? Um, I was just like, you know, <laughs> I just thought it was a dream. I thought, wow, that was a, a very, very powerful and strange vision. And now the house that I was guarding wasn't a very old house, but for some reason, that little area right there, because I had talked to the neighbors because we were bodyguarding this this woman. Her uh, ex-husband was trying, he was literally had threatened to kill her and tried to break in through the back door. Uh, so she was paying us to bodyguard her. So we had a guy upstairs and it was, it was, he was watching, you know, upstairs and they had like a balcony, you know, and I was taking my break in, in the den where there was no TV, no nothing. It was very peaceful. And uh, I was... Just, I fell asleep reading a book. It was nothing, it wasn't anything like, it was about, it was like Elmer Kelton. It was like a cowboy story. It had nothing to do with anything, you know? Yeah. I just fell asleep and I, that's what I woke up to was this, that. I was like, whoa, what the hell was that? So my wife, I've only talked about it once or twice maybe the whole time I've ever been on, the, I think I've talked about it one time on the show and uh, maybe talked about it once or twice to you, Anthony. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Nellie, I never really get, got into real detail about it, but she began to tell me something about it when she was dreaming today, this blue creature with horns <laughs> trying to mess with her. And I'm going like, wait a minute. I said, whoa. <laughs> so whatever it was that I saw on the other side of the room, maybe accompanied this, I'm just going to say this word and it's going to sound silly, but this vampire, whatever the hell that was. Now we can sit here and debate what it was or what it is. Was it a vampire? Was it a tulpa? Was it something that is pretending to be a vampire? Looked that way? I don't know. And what was the thing that was on the other side of the room that kind of you know moved around? And the last few days, we've heard noises in that bedroom of something moving around. Like we have a case of water right there. We or cases of water, and uh, I think it, it was like like it, it hits the water. And we'll think that it's one of the cats who got in somehow. Oh, yeah, you were asking me what, if all the cats were accounted for. Yeah, and we were like, hoping and praying that one of the cats weren't. That was a few days ago. Yeah, and they were all out, out in the living room hanging out. They weren't in y'all's room. Mm-hmm. So something has been around. Now, I don't know if it's it has anything to do with what we've been talking about on the show. But if you could, just say some prayers for us because there has been spiritual warfare. It's been ongoing. And we're starting to uncover things. You know, there were people that we thought, we, 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 they're not who we thought they were. Um, that we're pretty much playing both sides during this war. And I'm just like, yeah. A couple of the people on the other side even told us. They're like, hey, <laughs> you know, you got, you got people betraying you. I believe them. Jealous as the day is long. But, um, uh, Debbie, I don't know. She says, Josh, uh, how, what did she say? Let me see here. Uh, oh, Josh, wow, terrifying. You believe these entities were sent by the person targeting you? I don't know. I mean, one of the, the people that's been really, really bad doing what he's doing is just, he puts on a facade of like, He's a good guy. And there's all these people who think he's a good guy. And he's gone around and said a lot of horrible things that aren't, I mean, that's, he says he's a Christian, but I'm starting to doubt that a whole lot. Christians don't do that. They don't act like that. Um, and one of our former enemies, I guess you could say former enemies, we're at peace with him now. He says he's not. He said that that guy is doing stuff. He called one of my very close friends um, um, Monday night at 3 a.m., which is a weird time to be calling people, but he seems to like to call people at 3 a.m., which my friend, if he chooses to come out and say it, uh, you know, he was very close associate of mine. He's been on the show. And he called me and he says, dude, there's something wrong here with this guy. And he point blank told me, he says, I think he's doing something really bad. Because when I was talking to him, I could hear something demonic behind him. Because this guy has a little bit of clairvoyance. Well, he does. Let's put it that way. And he thinks that that, that guy was calling him at 3 a.m. for a reason. And if you know, that's the that's the uh, the witching hour. And he said he had tried to call him the day before, the night before. And he just didn't, he didn't answer. So you put two and two together, you know. Um, but this person shows up in every chat I'm in. He, he can't in ours now, of course. We've, we blocked him. But he shows up in all the chats. He says all the right things and everything. And now I'm dealing with this. And one of the people that we that has never made peace with us and probably never will, and you probably know who I'm talking about, who's, who's you know, um, he kind of quotes that guy. Like he says the same stuff. And I'm like, and this dude claimed to be on our side, but he never once publicly said anything good for us at all. So a lot of things are, are, are not adding up. But I will say this, and I'm not one to, to blame somebody for something if I don't think they did it. And this right here, honestly, I don't think it was him. I don't. I think this has everything to do with what I, what, who I interviewed and what I, the people I interviewed. So what I did, I actually reached out to them. Uh, one of them was busy. He was you know, a barbecue or whatever for after the, the church get together, whatever. The other one said, when I get out of church, I'll give you a buzz. 
because they were still doing church things. That was this morning when this happened. Or when I woke up, it was this morning. I slept longer than I usually do, which, like I, I was just saying, how I sleep about five hours a night, and every once, every couple of weeks or so, I'll sleep six, seven hours. I slept for seven hours. This is unusual for me. But, like I said, I'll do it every couple of weeks or so. So this individual messages me back and says, hey, I got a minute, what's up? And I said, I, I texted him a little bit, and I said, but it's too much, you know. So he calls, and I said, look, let me tell you what's going on. That's a joke. And we're not, like, best friends or anything, but we've, be, we've become friends, I guess. Um, I'm pretty much friends with everybody I've ever, you know, told their stories or whatever. I still talk to them because some of these people are experiencers, and they'll have more stuff happen, and I'm always open to, hey, let's talk, you know. Philip Barnes says, work in the USA versus Mexico soccer game at Jerry World. Wish I could listen in with everyone. Thank you, Philip. We love you, man. You're a great guy, and it was a pleasure to meet you at my conference. Thank you for that donation, my friend. God bless you. Um, but so I talked to him, and I said, is this something that could be? And he said, unfortunately, I'm not going to lie to you. He said, unfortunately, yeah, it's very possible you could be targeted. He's like, you were the only one that we gave our story to. But he comforted me with these words. He said, there are a lot of people who know about this stuff. It's not just you. You're not alone. He's like, but they probably wanted to test to see what they could do. Um, and I said, was I, this naive question, I mean, I mean, I had to ask it. You know, I said, do you think I'm in danger? And he says, I, I don't know. If that's, if it was them, then yeah. He's like, but did you, you, you said it wasn't really a hard fight. You know, you repelled it pretty easily. And I said, yeah, would this, could this be the prelude to something worse? And he says, I don't know. I, I can't answer that. And his advice was just to stay prayed up. He says, you have an audience. He goes, use it. Ask for prayers. And I'm doing that now. I'm asking for prayers, for protection, for me, for my family, for my household, for all of us, for our pets. And make this man that's going against us, going around telling everybody all these bad things in the name of Jesus, tell him, you know, it's, he's, he's wrong in what he's doing. And pray that God will shut these people's mouths, these, these, these backstabbing um, rumor mongers. And I'll be honest, I, I don't think he has anything to do with this. But when you go around doing what this person has done, and well, there's two or three of them, they could tell someone something, and that person could come out. Thank you, Rita Burnett. What an angel you are last night, too. Um, Kate, you know, coming through for us. You and Kate, I just y'all are top-notch people. Getting it done. We're getting it done. We got to get this stuff done. And so uh, what ended up happening is he said, you know, you could be attacked. But he said, apparently, you're strong enough, you know, you know, uh, spiritually, you know, that no, I'm just nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm flustered. Let's put it that way. And I'm not going to show, I'm not, I'm not up here trying to, 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 to be strong and tough so I can show my enemies that you're not hurting me, whatever. Cause that's, I'm, that's not, I'm not that guy. I'm not the fake guy. I'm not the, what do you call it? The, you know, beat my chest. People always trying to say all that, dude. I'm a very real person, dude. I'm a real person. If you've been to my conferences and you've talked to me, because I talked to almost everybody that was there. And if you've been there, then you know me. I'm not, that's who I am. That is who I am from top to bottom, from the top of my head to tip my toes. When you meet me, that's the person I am. It doesn't change. I don't turn on people when they, these people that are trying to say that, oh, they thought they knew me and I didn't, I didn't do anything to you. You started it. You, the wolf that you get is the one that you choose. It's your choice. And if as soon as you say peace, I'll give you peace. But when you go out of your way to do what you're doing, then you're, there's going to be problems. But that's that's something that, I, like I said, these people that are doing this right here, I don't know what that is. The only thing I can think of is because I talked about this. Now it is something that Gerald had warned me. He, he was very upfront, and Joel just said, did you talk to Gerald? That's kind of like a disclaimer, you know. Not responsible if something happens to you. We can't be, you know. He goes, you're going to have to be strong. And dealing and fighting with these, these not fighting with, really, because I'm not really, go, I'm not fighting back much. I'm just letting, you know, they're talking crap. But uh, that opens you up. 
you know, because you, there's a chink in your armor. And then what happens is these, these people that are, they don't like that I'm repeating their information. So I'm thinking that they come to you. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, if I had to put two and two together. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you dwell on the negative of these of what these people are doing, which is hard not to. It's very hard not to. I was talking to Barton about it, and he's just like, dude, we're men. He's under attack, too. And he's like, and we can't say their names, because if you do, you're giving them power. And it, But it's hard. He says, he goes, look, I know it's hard, brother. It's hard to be quiet and not say anything, but it, it's, it's, you know, you want to. But then you open yourself up to this. And like I said, I don't think these people, that they did this. Maybe somebody that they've been talking to said, oh, you know, they convinced them, did that, maybe. But I don't believe that. I really don't. I don't know. I don't know 100%, but I think this has everything to do with, um, I didn't want to say the name of that temple because when I woke up, the name was ringing in my head. So it was like a calling guard. And I was actually, I'm going to say something that sounds kind of goofy, and I don't want to, I don't want something worse to come at me, but I mean, whatever. I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I've said this before. I am not afraid. Not at all. But uh, I did say some things when I came out of the room. I felt something like around me, and I basically told it, go back to the sender. This is all you got? Maybe I shouldn't have taunted it or whatever, but I was like, that's pretty weak. You know, a couple of you come in the room and you can't do nothing. I mean, you just, you get choked. <laughs> like, like WWE, you know? Put a stone cold stunner on them. Thing looked like Sting. <laughs> it it kind of did. Like, he had the white face and the hair. I was like. I never really liked him for that reason when I was a kid. It was just weird, dude. I, you know, that's kind of what you look. I'm not a wrestling guy. I've never yeah. been into that kind of stuff. You know, my friend Lance does it, you know, whatever, Lance Hoyt. But, but um, I have a lot of friends that do it, actually. Chico's another one. He's a luchador. But, I mean, I don't care. I'm just like, I, I, that didn't bother me. And I'm here to say right now, you didn't scare me. You didn't stop me. You Got my adrenaline going so hard that, you know, my heart was beating. Um, but that's not going to stop me. And if anything, if it continues, this is going to harden my resolve, and then we're just going to take it deeper and deeper, and we're going to go more and more in. Because I go all in. When people do this to me, you know what it does? It just winds me up and makes me more determined to take you down. You're evil. What you do is evil. You know, God help those that are under attack by these beings. Now, maybe I was opened up because of my anger toward these other people, these gossipers. But these gossipers, I don't think, did this. I think these people that did this, I think they are directly tied to that temple. I'm not going to your your turf and messing with you. And I would suggest strongly that you don't do that to me because I already know the secret, if it is a secret at all. And that was thanks to Joel and Gerald that you can't really hurt me. I haven't done anything so egregious that you can do that to me. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I'm a seasoned veteran at this, and you're not going to, it doesn't scare me. You're not going to stop me. It got me flustered, yeah. Am I concerned for my people? Absolutely. But that was pretty bold. The other people at least had the sense to go after you guys first, you know, mm -hmm. work their way up. And then they kind of, if they couldn't handle them, then this, this dummy came straight for me, which could be them, could be the prelude to something bigger. But I am not afraid. I have fought way bigger, stronger things than that goofy thing. You look goofy too, dude, by the way. I'm just saying, you look like, like, a, like a knockoff, like a wish version of Sting. That's what you look like. <laughs> And I hope you're you're hurting today. As is above, is is below. What's in the flesh will be manifested in the spirit, and vice versa. So, hopefully, your neck is okay. Just larping as the crow, douchebag. What's that? It, it looks scary, but it wasn't. It looked like was it Halloween? You know, come on. Mm -hmm. Trying to be like Brandon Lee. Yeah. The crow. Yeah. You're the crow, dude. I didn't even think about that. You're the crow. <laughs> but you didn't even look like the crow. It just, and it looked, 
You look dirty too. You look like a like a vagrant. <laughs> you look like a vagrant, dude. That's what you look like. So yeah, that was really weird that you came into my 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 domicile and then tried to do something. And it's funny because on that dresser, you know, I have uh, uh, one of these like on there, and mm -hmm. it seemed like when we hit the dresser like that, and it's, there's one draped over the top, you know. And I think that when it went through, when it, like that part of the dresser went through, that what would have been his head like spiritually and i think that that's what really also that's a big part of what stopped it too because i think he was i don't think they expected to deal with what they i don't think they expected that i really don't think you did i really think that somebody might have lied to you too and told you that i was an easy target and i'm not because i know that's what happened to these other fools they thought they could come into my house and build an altar but that worked out real well for you didn't it We found it and destroyed it in the name of Christ. But you did do it. And you admitted to your cohort that you did it. That he, he was like, yeah, that's what they did. Told me and Bettina that. On the phone. You built an altar. Nice try. Then they go and tell everybody, he's satanic. Why? Because I need a bigger, stronger demon to fight your demons? No, dude. I serve the one true living God, the Father of Christ. That is who I serve. I don't serve Yaldabaoth or all these other names that you say. I serve the one true living God, the Father of Christ. That's who I serve. And when you say your God is more powerful than my God, no, he's not. I don't serve Shaitan. So you're, you're, you're tricked. You're deceived. Completely out of your depths. And, like I answered that person on the in the YouTube comments, on, I think it was either the Q, it might have been the Q and A or whatever. I wish I could find it. Look through and see if you can look, because I really want to read their comments. And, and it wasn't nothing bad. They they were just disappointed in me because they thought that I was keeping uh, uh, information that should have was pertinent, and that's their right. And and, I, and I'm glad that they called me out on that. Don't ever be afraid to, to talk. This is not a uh, Everybody has different beliefs, and this is not an echo chamber, and I've never wanted that. A lot of great comments on there, a lot of good people. And this person, I don't believe that they were <clears throat> trying to say anything bad. I think that they were just trying to tell me they didn't like that I had said that I didn't agree with some of what they said. But I think that they thought that I was censoring that them, you know, and I wasn't. It's not the case. There were just some things that they wanted me to talk about on here. And then I was like, I can't do that. I just can't do that because it's, it's YouTube, man. I can't do it. And quite frankly, I think it would confuse some people. Not that you aren't smart. I mean, you guys are some of the smartest. This is, we got the smartest audience ever. I mean, good grief. Let me see if I can find it, though. But I would love to read this comment to you <clears throat> and then explain to you. Because everybody's entitled to their opinion. As long as you're not being mean or nasty. Okay, so... I won't delete you. St stop me if I'm reading the wrong comment. This one says, I am very curious to know about the other, th the other things, the 15% you didn't agree with, especially if it came to certain opposing beliefs going on now. Even if you don't, perhaps give us an opportunity to ponder or hypothesize these things for ourselves. At the end of the day, it's all about information laid out for us to think about, etc., Please don't hold back. No. That's not it? Mm -mm. Okay. Now, this person was a little more, you know. Hmm. And then I had another one that was like, I don't agree with you that Jesus is not God. Well, that's the thing. Why would Jesus tell you to worship God? He doesn't tell you to worship him. That's, that's, that's you know, it's very simple. Um. 
could he mean though like that that don't I don't know yeah we're not gonna get into a religious discussion today we're not gonna do that it's just you know I don't even know how to pose a question that you you have I started it and I was like it's too complicated I don't know you know you have to do a lot of reading okay and you got to understand that there were books that were taken out and their books I believe belong in there I think one of my colleagues said it best, and he said, um, you know what, I'm going to get into it. I'll make a Facebook video, and I'll play a little clip from, from – this guy is – technically, he's a rabbi, but he points out what the Old Testament is, and he says it very clearly. And it's just a two-minute little thing, and he says what it is. It's, a, it's not one book. It's a, it's a series of, of different books. And they don't even follow the same timeline. They were just left in there by what was left from the church. And what he points, Salavino, thank you for that donation. We appreciate it greatly. And this is all I'm going to say about it, and we're going to move on to the encounters. Not just what happened to me, but others. Scott, yes, they are. Exactly. When you go and you look, though, what, what he says on there, and, and I, don't, I don't know if I should be quoting him. I don't even know if I, I haven't talked to him about this. He's got a very large channel with a large following. And this guy's a, 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 he's a mad genius, dude, seriously. And he says that basically the Old Testament is a series of, bo- a, gr- a grouping of books that they just put together and try to, and then they, he says it himself. He said, it's a history of the Jewish people. He's Jewish himself, you know. Um, when he does his show, he wears a yarmulke. He's, you know, he's a scholar. And he says that it's, it's not fluid. It's basically just a bunch of books that have been put in there, and then they were made to to fit, and that they were, as in his words, there was a lot of editing and redacting done. This is a guy, you can go look him up. Go look him up. I mean, he's, you know, I will, if you want to talk to me private or whatever, if you, if you have my information or whatever, I can give you the information. You can go look, and I'll show you. I'll post it on my Facebook, and you can go and look. Okay, I don't want to, you know, say, I don't want to say anything because I don't have his permission because I didn't ask for it. So I don't want to quote him on here and then people go run back and tell him I was quoting him, but you can go in and see what he says. I'll put it on my Facebook. Okay, I'll post it in the, uh, um, but then people will probably go and pick him apart because what people do is very simple. And this is all I'm going to say about we're done with it. What they do is they find whatever fits their current belief and then they go and they grab that. My belief is ever changing. It's like there's this, this you're grounded in this, but the, the, you, you, it changes with the information because that's what's supposed to happen. You're not supposed to just be so stuck and, you know, set in stone that you can't accept new information. Because once you do that, you're done. You're done. That's it. You're done. Nobody's telling you to just accept anything that comes along willy nilly. Now, that's not correct either. But you have to be willing. To accept the truth when it slaps you in the face. I mean, you have to be willing to accept it. You know, that's it. I mean, you know, there are people who aren't going to believe, and and that's fine. The main thing is that you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. To me, that's the that's the main thing. You got as you got that, you got that. What what are we fighting about? We shouldn't even be worrying about. We should be worrying about what's coming. Revelations unfolding before our eyes. And we started worrying about what the Old Testament, nick and picking, nick picking, how do we get here? Um, that's important. But if, 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 if it comes down to where we're headed or where we were, let's worry about where we're headed. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. Deadpool Kid, let's do this. He says, these people are pathetic, a bunch of edge lords who know they've never been in control of their own life. And somehow they think they can command entities to do their bidding. They know they're weak. They know they'll never amount to anything. Yeah, Deadpool Kid, I appreciate the donation. I'll say this, like I said. I don't think these are edge. Uh, the, yeah, the people you're talking about the, that are spreading rumors are edge lords. Yeah, but whatever was was in my uh, bedroom last night, that was no edge lord. That was a vampiric looking entity that may have been one of them out of their body. And now get this. Think about this. That noise that I heard on the other side of the the whatever. They call it the other. They have this other. So it may have split from him, and they may have been on both sides of our bed. Then Nellie has this dream about this blue demon-looking creature with horns. And I'm going to tell you a story about that, and we'll get into it right now. 
Okay, so this one here came out of Pensacola, Florida. And what I'm about to tell you, it, it really, it, it's, it hits home to me because of what I saw, what I, I think maybe, I used to say accidentally, now I don't think it was. But I'll say this, it was like a remote viewing of something. Um, you know, like I said, I just told you what happened to me, and I'm going to tell you what happened to this woman. Her name is Kathy. Kathy reached out to us uh, back in November. No, it was October. It was, yep. Uh, it was right before Halloween. I, was trying, I thought it was after Halloween. It was right before Halloween. And I had another story that happened in that area that was right after Halloween. And I know why I had them confused because one of them was her neighbor. And her neighbor described something that looked like a, sh I'll start with her, her neighbor, because it's a short encounter. She's driving home. It's two days after Halloween. And she's like, she's driving home. And she said, I'll, I'll never forget. I was arguing with my kids about the, because the kids, they eat the candy. And she's like, and they're just like shoveling the candy. <laughs> they're like bouncing off the walls. And she's like, one of them's got a cavity already starting. And she's like, and I'm telling my, my son, stop with the candy. And then again, the, the, my daughter in the back is eating it by the truckload. She's like, and then my son's like, mom, mom. And she's like, and I wasn't even going very fast. She goes, and I look and she says for a split second, she's like her kid, her son saw it straight on, but he's like eight years old or nine years old, something like that. The, he's nine. She has another kid that was in the back. She didn't see anything. And the other one was 11. And she saw it because she leaned in to see what it was. And she goes, but what I saw, for a split second, was a black wolf-like creature. She's like, you know, I just, it looked like a werewolf. That's what she said. And she said, and then it went down on on, a, on all fours and was like, whew, across the road. She's like, when it when it decided to move, she goes, it was trucking. She said, it was like quick, like it was like whoosh, like, like a blur. Hmm. And so she talks to her neighbor, Kathy, who lives two houses down. They've lived next to each other for 11 years. And she said, the neighbors in between us, uh, one of them is in the process of moving. They were, they were having an estate sale. The other one, she said they're very elderly and their, their granddaughter was staying there temporarily to help them. So they know really, they couldn't talk to them about, you know, whatever. But she said that the night that this happened, she goes, you need to talk to Kathy because I heard something uh, run through our back fence. And she said that it knocked down the fences of the neighbors too, whatever this was. So Kathy says she was out on, she goes, I was out on my, my back patio. She's like, and I know, she goes, I was smoking a cigarette. And she was, she already knows. Kathy listens to the show. Mm -hmm. Her friend that she talked, that I talked to, uh, I think her name was Deb. She don't, she listens to the show. She just told me because Kathy wanted me to, to tell, you know, whatever. <laughs> Joe Breezy, hey Joe, what's going on, brother? So what ended up happening, okay, this entity or whatever, she, she hears a clicking noise. Like she's like, you know, she's like, I've heard you talk about you have a, a hog, a pig or whatever. He's not a hog. He's a little pig, you know, uh, on your show. And she's like, you know, she goes, my sister had one and they like to grind their teeth or tusks. You know, they do that. They oh, make yeah. that k -k -k noise. He does it all the time. And she said, I hear that. And I thought, sounds like my sister's pig, you know? And she's like, she told her sister, she's like, Josh Turner and them have a pig, <laughs> you know? And he looks, I've seen a picture, he kind of looks like Truff a little bit, a little bit. When he was little, he's gotten big. Yeah. But they live out on a farm up in Georgia. But she says, you know, I'm sitting there in the back patio and I'm smoking my cigarette. And she goes, and then I look, I hear this clicking noise again. And then I hear crunching of, of feet through the, the grass, you know, and... and She's like, and then she goes, we have these lights that are strung up across the yard. I said, yeah, I got some of those. We, I think we just put them up, right? You just put them up a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I was reading this, and I filed it under Goatman because I didn't really know how else to to file it, whatever. And in the time, at the time, of course, we were full on being attacked by these people, and I just, I was. Dealing with that, I was dealing with my my job. I, we you know we were trying to enjoy having a successful successful conference. Couldn't even do that. Um, and I was trying to write the next book about the subject that we ended up shelving um, with Nick Redford.
but that didn't happen. So what ended up happening, I'm sitting there. She says, well, she goes, what happened? I'm sitting there. She's like, and I look and I see this entity. I don't know. She goes, the first, I didn't know what it was. When I was looking at it. It was like a white, just like a, and she even said it. She goes, she goes, one of my son's Pokemon cards. Mm-hmm. She's like, there was this creature that was like a white, tall thing with a tail. She's like, I think it was like a Pokemon. That's what she said. And she goes, and then as I'm staring at it, I'm in, I'm in shock and disbelief. She's like, I'm looking at this being, and it's just walking through my yard. She goes, and then it kind of does this weird, like, kind of wiggles around. That's the way she described it. And its arms and legs wiggled, and its head kind of was turning back and forth, like, blah, 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 you know. And she's like, these horns, like, it stops. And there's, like, horns. And she's like, and the skin is blue. And she's like, I'm not kidding. And she thought that I was going to think she was crazy. She's like, I know you probably think I'm not. I said, no, 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 no. I said, you know, because I didn't reach out to her when it happened. I had too much going on, like I said. I said, look, I need this story. Can you please just tell me what happened? I said, don't worry about what I think right now. But we've dealt with what we think are blue entities before on the show that we think are tied to this kind of creature. So she tells me, she says, I, I, I see this being start to become like a, a like a goat, like, a, you know. But then when she started, that was not good. <laughs> she said when she starts to describe the um, the horns that I stopped, I said, wait a minute. I said, hold on. I said, Kathy, you're describing a ram, not a goat. And uh, she goes, I'm sorry, does that matter? And I said, yeah, it matters. I want a goat man. Why are you bringing up this ram, dude? Bye. I was like, I'm out of here, Buster. Done with that. No, I'm just kidding, folks. Trying to lighten the mood here. Seriously, though, she goes, she's, I said, this is, this sounds like a ram because the horns are curved. And she says, yeah. And I could, she goes, I could see every bit of this creature under the lights. We had my husband put in these, like, strung up like a, she's like, it's like, the, it's lit up like the 4th of July back. They strung up like 10 strands of these things, you know. Um, Liberty. Thank you for that donation. We appreciate it. And then during the conversation, he comes in and I hear him in the background. I put up a dozen and I was like, there you go, Kathy. You just lied to me. <laughs> Can't get your story straight about the lights. Why, why, how can I believe you about this creature? And I literally said that and she got all freaked out. I said, look, <laughs> I'm messing with you. Cause she could tell her voice. She was it scared her. So she kind of laughed and that's, She's like, that's what I like about you. And that was a compliment for me. I appreciate that because she said, that's what I like about you. She's like, you make me feel comfortable. I do that. I try to do that because sometimes people, oh boy, it's hard, you know? So when this thing was walking through her yard, she's like, I'm dumbfounded. I'm dumbstruck. She goes, and I had a phone right there in my hand. She goes, but everything in me screamed to not move. Just don't move. And she goes, and there was this weird, like, inner monologue. My, she was always my grandmother. She's like, I love my grandmother. She's like, and I heard her voice saying, don't move. And she says, my grandmother called me Katie Bug. She says, Katie, don't move. And she's like, and I just sat there looking at it. And she's, this thing was had its head turned, you know, and it was staring at her as it walked. Like, looking at her like, yeah, say something, lady. And she goes, and before my eyes, it was getting taller. And she goes, finally, I just got up and boom, ran into the door, ran inside real quick. She's like, I got a good look at it, though. She's like, it had whitish hair over blue skin. Once it shook and, you know, did what it did, vibrated is what I would call it, vibrated. And she said, and then it was a bluish skin creature with like a white hair. She didn't say fur. And I asked her that. I said, look, when I get Bigfoot reports, sometimes I ask, I was like, did, did it, was it hair or was it fur? And then they'll go, um, that's a good question. And then they'll try to describe to us what the hell the, was it hair like this, you know, or was it fur? You know, uh, my hair is not fur. Your hair is not fur. It's two different things. <clears throat> so, you know, was it more human hair? Like she said, yeah, I would say it was more like hair. With a bluish, light bluish skin. And she said the face was absolutely evil, demonic. She's like, there was no way you could say, oh, this was just a, you know, there's not, you're not going to be like wanting this thing in your yard or in your, your 
You know, let's give it apples. What do you, what do you eat? <laughs> Demon goat thing. Do you want to, let's give you some, are you hungry? Let's bake it a pie. Let's give you some blueberry pie. You look like you're hungry. If you're not Leave it in the window so for him. It's been, been a long trip from the underworld. Do you, do you want something? Um, but no, this is, this is, you know, sh this thing was walking through her backyard and she's like, and it was in my back freaking yard. She's like, as I go inside, I hear this crashing noise. She's like, and then she's like, right after that, she's like, I look out the window. I was like, I got my husband. We're both looking out the window. And she said that you could see part of the fence was knocked down into the neighbors and the neighbors were gone because they were moving. And then the other neighbors were was an elderly uh, couple. I think I think there was only the guy left, or maybe it was the woman. I don't know. There was there was there was an elderly couple that lived there, and one of them had passed away or something. So the granddaughter was there, like watching. And so she hadn't had a chance to talk to them until I, at, at the time that she sent me the email. When I talked to her, she did, and the granddaughter saw the damage and didn't know what it was. And no, nobody, there was nothing that preceded this what happened with this goat-like creature. But that was a few days before Halloween, right? I believe it was like October 25th or 6th, something like that. Um, and then, because she said it was like, you know, right before Halloween, I can't remember exactly what she told me. But the, I remember her saying that her friend had an encounter two days after Halloween, so I talked to her. And that was when she had the November 2nd. That was at 8 p.m. wasn't even that late. It was right there in her, in her, like, like she said she was like a block from her house when she saw this werewolf looking thing. <clears throat> so she asked me if it was connected. And I said, <laughs> I said, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, would you say it's connected? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I totally different creatures though. Can't articulate exactly how, but it's just th th this, these things happen too too often to not be to not have some kind of connection i don't know it's just like because it's not a coincidence that that every time wolf asks well not every time but usually whenever wolf asks like uh someone who's had one experience he, he always makes it a point to ask them not only if they know anyone who's had experiences but if they've had other experiences that are not along the lines of the one that that they chose to share with them and overwhelmingly, the answer is always is always yes. And th they may they may not even realize it at first. I mean, like m most people have had more experiences than what is consciously at the forefront of their mind. Um, and a lot of, of of our of our witnesses of uh, like I mean, like if if you just go and if you listen to the interviews, like a a, a lot of people that they. A lot of those people who were there for like two, two, three episodes worth of interviews, they started out um, just like saying, hey, I have this this story about a, a dogman encounter or I have a story about um, a, a haunting that uh, took place in my home. Well, th their intention was to share that one story, but Wolf, Wolf talked to them because, you know, he's real good at talking to people and they they went through and they kind of mentally went through their lives and realized oh yeah you know what yeah the, 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 there was just, there was just one time where where this happened to me when i lived over here and they started making connections to different things and you know details matter context matters it's, it's extremely important and, mm -hmm. and wolf does a really good job of just like talking to people for hours and hours and helping them to make sense of all the things they've been through yeah very well said Mm -hmm. uh, he's right on what he just said, everything. So, so what ended up happening is um, her friend says, do you think that this is, well, her friend told me the story. She said, I now, and she was very, you know, she goes, now I didn't see the goat thing. I didn't see that. Um, but the neighbor at the end of that block got a, got a glimpse of something that was white, he said, with a tail. Now, Here's the thing. He saw something white. He told Kathy's uh, friend. I mean, you know, okay, so it had white white hair. And so 
I told her, I said, try to find out, try to talk to this guy. And it took her a little while, but she went back and she talked to this guy. He said, yeah, but it just looked white. He didn't see the bluish tint to it, but you got to remember it was at night. And he only saw it because he was pulling into his driveway and he saw something run out into the street. And then he said it went like down real low, get this, almost flattened itself out and crawled up underneath another neighbor's fence. And he said it must have crawled underneath my fence too because my dogs back there had dug kind of down in and they were trying to, you know, whatever. And it, because it only knocked down part of the fence and then on the other side, it must have crawled through the hole. Um, why it chose to do all that, it, I don't know. I don't know. And and here's the thing. When it appeared in her yard, why if it came from that direction, this is another weird thing I don't understand about this encounter. Um, but if it came from that other direction, then why why did how did it like how did it appear in her yard? Yeah. Like did it knock down the wall? No, it didn't. No, it just showed up. So it just showed up in her this woman's yard. She saw it. There was visible damage to the fence, like, you know. Like her neighbors, uh, the one that who's, I think it was, like I said, I think it was her grandfather. She was taking care of the granddaughter said, it's like Bigfoot ran through our fence, you know? Um, and she was like, no, it wasn't Bigfoot. It did not look like a Bigfoot at all. The way you would think of a Bigfoot. She said this thing. Yeah. Jojo, I, that just manifested itself there. Yeah, exactly. And she said, she saw it like its head hit the top of the lights. So I said, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, go out there and measure. So her husband, nice guy, he was a really friendly guy. Um, he goes out there and he measures or whatever, eight and a half feet. It was like eight foot nine or eight foot uh, seven inches from the where, where those those things. So the top of its head hit. And I told her, I said, did it seem like it was over eight and a half, eight and a half feet? She goes, it just seemed enormous. It was huge. She's like, but it didn't start out that way. She said it didn't. It was just like a, a smaller white pale had a tail she said the tail was whipping around and you know like a goat man you, you like like i don't remember a lot of goat man reports with tails yeah but this sounded a lot like these blue curled horned beings that i remote viewed when i was like 2003 that i just like i said i, I, I say i accidentally did it i don't know why i did it or how i did it and i don't know where i was at um, I know that that house I was staying in had a, some weird activity. They had a maid. They were wealthy. But they had a, a woman that lived with them was a maid or whatever. She she moved out because she saw a woman floating down the stairs. Now, I had a guard that worked for me named Neil. Neil was an old friend of mine from years ago. He was from Buffalo, New York. And he told me a weird story um, about this. Uh, and, Anthony, you've heard this one about the uh, cr pale crawler, mm -hmm. which was weird that he worked there. Doing security for me. We had a guy that had to sit outside and watch everything outside. And then we had somebody inside. And I was too tired. And I was going to have to come back in the morning. So Scorpion, Scorpio was upstairs. And the lady and her children were up, upstairs asleep. And I was downstairs. And I told Scorpio, I said, I'm going to read this book. And if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. And I did. And I woke up. And he was the first person I told. I said, you're not going to believe what happened. I had this weird dream. And so Scorpio told me, he goes, dude, I've been having weird dreams here too. So it was just, I don't know. It was a weird thing. Miguel Guerra says, wish I could share this box of pan dolce. Uh, my tia made for me with everyone tonight. Here's the, my end of the cult. Uh, what do you say? Cult membership. I think I'm only $10,000 away from getting that PRT Shasta collab bike. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, thank you for that donation. We appreciate it. We're just stacking the end so we can get our equipment, man. We got to do it. Uh, and we appreciate it. You know, and I had some of my fellow podcasters and, and, and YouTubers and authors who told me, they're like, don't be afraid to ask your audience, dude. You don't ask them. And I said, yeah, but I get attacked. People, t And then Ken was just like, who cares? He goes, you have to do, you got to do what you got to do. Barton said the same thing. Thank you guys for being my friends. I appreciate you backing me up. And in fact, Bettina was another one. There she is right there. They all said it. They're like, dude, you don't. You just do what you got to do, you know? Matt Imp said the same thing. He was like, dude, don't be afraid to add on these guys. I, I don't know if I would have if my colleagues didn't tell me to just, just do it, you know? Because I don't like asking for anything, but I need to get things done. And I can't, 
um, like just pay it right now. I got things I got to take care of. And so, yes, I did say, look, I do need this equipment. We do need to do this. And everybody who's been able to donate, I appreciate it. But if it's going to put you out, don't do it. Don't feel pressured. Just watch. Give me views. And you know what really helps? Hit the like button and tell people about our show. And tell them to join the club. Look, we are here trying to find answers to this weirdness that we're dealing with. But Tina, if you're, since you're late, I got to bring you up to snuff. I had something happen to me really quickly. I'll tell her what happened. I just, it, it was over my bed last night. I went to bed, and, and Bettina knows as well as she says, hey, to Maddie. Maddie knows, too. Everybody knows. I, I, I stay up until 6 a.m., and then I sleep until 11, you know. Um, but, you know, this thing, I don't usually go to bed until after 7, actually. But uh, this thing, it, it, it jumped on me. And it was, it looked kind of like how you described that jackal creature. That's kind of what it looked like, but with fangs. I, I made a joke and I was being facetious, but I said it was like uh, Sting, the wrestler, or the crow. Anthony said the crow. Mm -hmm. But it was two things in the house. And one of them messed with Nelly, one messed with me. But what, here's my, here's what I'm going to say, folks. What if, what if this thing that was maybe it was its other and it's separated and what if one of these others looks like one of these ram horned blue devils just throwing it out there i'm not i'm not i don't know i don't know um but it, i think it's odd and anthony can attest to this that we talked about this we were going to do a goat man story on, on tonight we were going to retell one mm -hmm. and we this is you know so then I did a bunch of research going back to, to, to look for these blue devil like creatures. And there was a video game I came across and I don't want to say the name of it because I don't, I don't know. You never know. I don't want to get sued or whatever, but there was a video game who had some, looked, something looked very similar to that. And I had never played this game before. So I don't know. Two shadows. Thank you for that donation. It's just a, it's a weird thing, man. I, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. But it tried to, um, yeah, it tried to it tried to bite me or grab me, whatever, both, you know. And I ended up grabbing it, and then there was like an altercation. Um, on, it was definitely on a spiritual plane. Long pointed, jagged, sharp teeth. To, yeah, I don't think this was really jagged though. Mine, the one I saw, I say mine, it's not mine, but my encounter. The teeth were very long, and the mouth kind of jutted out. I don't know, Bettina. You've told me you're in county. You've told it on the show, but it just it just kind of reminded me of that. B, it just you know. <sighs> so I had an anxiety, and Nellie, bless her heart, boy, she just she was right there with me. She's like, "I'm right here. Don't worry. I'm right here." And I was like, she was she was comforting me and hugging me, and I'm like, "What the hell is this woman gonna do if this thing comes back? It's weak." I'm messing with you, honey. I'm messing with you. She's probably watching like, what? <laughs> I'm just trying to I'm trying to bring some levity to the situation here, man. Um, but no, she was she was right there with me and she started telling me about her dream. And if she wants to share it, she didn't give me permission to today. So I didn't and I didn't ask. I didn't, you know. Yeah, it was terrifying what happened to me too, B. It uh Yeah, Jay, Jamie, yeah. I get home and she's holding a chunk lot. She's like, what? You're going to make the Mexican come out of me, I said. Why you want to make jokes? And then I'm like, you know, honey, <laughs> I was just joking and bam, right upside the head with the chancla, right? She's like, you think that vampire's bad, I said. Don't make me look up on you, Holmes. She don't really talk like that, unless she's angry. Um, and I think, and Ma there's Maddie. I think Maddie heard her talking like that the other day. I heard her talking her down. She's like, she's like, Nelly, put the chancla down. Put it down. Go outside. And then she was like, okay, Simone. Because, you know, with Nelly, she's like, she's like, uh, it's like prison rules. You know, you got to watch yourself. You got to get shanked. You never know. You, you step out of line. She's not like that. But anyway, so what ended up happening, um, this woman, we talked about this, this being, this entity, whatever, and then her friend's dog man encounter, which was like two days later, and it was a black. And she, so, so here's what her son saw, the, 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 the Deb. Her son said, Mom. It was sitting down in the ditch, and then it stood up, and it took two steps, and it looked just like a man, and then it got down on all fours. She's like, and then it ran real fast before we 
could make contact with it with the vehicle. And his older sister, the young one, didn't see. She just saw like a blur. That's all she saw. The other one just caught like a tail end of it and said it had a big tail. So what happened over that week period in that Florida neighborhood, I don't know. It was weird. It was very weird. But rest assured, if they knocked over any trash cans or if they did any damage, their uh, HOA was probably all over them. <laughs> Yeah, we just want to stop by to say that, uh, well, we couldn't help but notice there was some, like, uh, hoof prints all over your backyard, and it looks like your fence is missing a couple of boards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you'd fix that, that would be just fine. That would be absolutely great. We also noticed that there was a stick that was that had fallen, and it was partway in the yard and partway on the sidewalk. So we're going to need you to fix that, too, and uh, that'll be $250. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. I'll see you. Thank you. Make that check payable to assholes or us. And then they left. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that's probably how it went down. I'm not saying this is 100% reenactment, but that's probably what happened. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Lolo says, well, if all your businesses don't work out, YouTube channel, don't, but you can become a comedian. I've done stand-up, and I, and I killed it. I did stand-up, and when I've done it, I've, I've gone to the, the, my friend has a club. It's largely the audience is African-American. And um, when I did my routine one night, I got, like, the most laughs and the most, like, clap and everything. They, they loved it. I mean, I killed it. And there was a guy who was another comedian who's uh, – did, he he did pretty good too. And he came up to me and he's like, "Man, you killed it, dude." He's like, "He's like, you like, he's like, you're like a black dude up there, man." Um, so I guess that's like a compliment because you got to get to know your audience. Um, I did do stand up one time years ago, and I was wondering why nobody was laughing, and I realized that I was talking in English, and nearly all of my audience was Spanish speaking, and they didn't tell me that, and I didn't know, and I was like, nobody's nobody's laughing. And I was like, I thought these jokes would be hilarious. And there was like one or two people laughing really loud. And then my, my friend, he comes up to me and he's a security guard, right? And he says, it was as a place called Los Tegaleros years ago. And he said, he goes, everybody here speaks Spanish. <laughs> I was like, should I redo the routine? Because like, I didn't plan for that. I thought that this was like, you know, but it was a, a, a Latino bar, uh, what they call uh, Tejano bar. And so everybody laughed at me for not knowing my audience. So, but my friend, he has a club that that's it's the patrons are typically African American, and and uh, I like I like going in there to eat and I get along with everybody, and uh, so yeah, I get a lot of laughs in there. Um, but one day maybe I'll do some of my jokes on the routine. I'll I'll give them to you. <clears throat> but uh, we we'll probably have to do it on Rumble. In fact, I know I have to do it on Rumble because I can't do it here because I'll be in trouble. Because I was, you know, making jokes and saying stuff, you know, and whatever. So, moving on from that, from this weird, whatever that was, this dog man and then the, the weird blue, white, blue entity. Um, I don't know what to think of it. But uh, anyways, I told you guys the other day that we were going to talk about Carlos. Now, Carlos is a guy who, okay, so I kind of screwed up on that. I thought Carlos had been um, destroyed. Let's put it that way. And I say destroyed because he was a vampire. First, I thought he was a, a werewolf creature because that's what Gerald had talked about him kind of being that way. But apparently his big thing was to, to, was to move around as a black dog or a black wolf. But he practiced vampirism, and he was a drug dealer. And I had said something about him on the. When did we talk about him? Did we talk about him on the? Might have been the show with the Q and A, or which one was I, it? I, I think that was on the Q and A. Okay, because I thought it was on the show. But it sounds like a great guy. <laughs> well, well, he he turned out to be. He was one of their connections, one of their friends, and whenever they stopped doing that, you know, they made a deal with this guy. And he became one, he was like the third guy up. He was the higher up um, in the drug dealing deal, whatever. And so, yes, if you have any questions, put them in all caps so we can answer them if the best we can. 
So what Carlos did, he stepped in and began to sell narcotics um, to this group of, of people from this temple, these demonic people. And I thought, I thought that he, with the way that, that uh, Joel was telling me, he was deceased. But Joel, he messaged me afterwards and says, he did, he's not dead. He just got punished. And I'm going to tell you about his punishment. This is crazy. I mean, it is, it's, he goes, talk to him about his punishment. So uh, here's kind of funny story too. I, so I called this guy and when, when he answers the phone, I hear, hello. And it sounds like an old guy, you know, and he's, he's a Hispanic guy, but I thought it was an old white guy or something, you know, and he was just like a, a Caucasian man or something, you know, and he goes, hello. And I was like, and he goes, this, this Carlos says, yeah, this Carlos. And he talked, and when he talked, I saw like he was talking out the side of his mouth. Like that, you know? And I said, what's wrong? He says, dude, part of my jaw has been removed. And so I was like, what the hell? And so he, he went on to tell me, he says, dude, I have, I've got, he's going through multiple surgeries because when he stopped doing what he was doing and he accepted Christ, he basically escaped. He, he showed up at their church. And since then, their church has been, you know, basically... Uh, targeted, you know, by these people, but they can't do anything. They can't, they really can't. So he said, he goes, dude, after I, I stopped, he goes, years and years of abusing my body, he goes, much like Gerald and Joel, he goes, my part of my jaw has, has had to be removed. He goes, and the, there was a break there in my jaw, like almost immediately, he's like, everything, you know, it's not like you're, you're healed all of a sudden, everything's fine, you're just like normal. No, he goes, you have to pay the, the price. What these people did, it says, Josh Turner, do you want your personal encounters to stop? Um, yeah, I'd like to. i am just got to keep praying and, and do what I got to do. Um, I, I don't want to have to come up here and tell you that something happened to me. I really don't. That's not something that I don't, I don't think I should be dealing with. I don't want to. But anyways, moving on. So this guy, what he said to me, he said, he goes, I said, well, how did your, how did this happen? He goes, well, you can heal really quickly when you have these, this blood. And now what I'm going to get into is going to get kind of weird. Okay. Like this ain't already weird. What we've been talking about, it's already a damn weird thing, but okay. It's going to get weirder. Buckle up folks. Okay. And, and let me ask you a question real quick before we get into what happened to Carlos and what he saw. Um, this is we're we have an hour. And, and somebody was actually complaining, saying that, you know, in the comments section, and they were like, three, four hours, and the, the paranormal's cool, but geez, what's up with all this, you know? And several people liked that comment, so I was wondering, like, is this too much? Are we going too long? Because I want to do what the audience wants. I want to give you the entertainment that you want, because this is entertainment, um, but it's also thought-provoking, and it's, you know, whatever. Do you guys are do you guys want me to shorten it a little bit to make it because I mean I mean honestly we can make more episodes and just shorten it. I think the episode is going to be overwhelmingly no. I mean the intro. Well, I want to make sure because people were liking that guy's comment and it's. Mm. Then again, we get trolled and it could be one of these dickheads trolls and then. Because I mean the fact is everybody the, he he tells tells his friends to do it and they go and like it. Because fact. <clears throat> Because we'll have people on our show. I mean, I mean, uh, the viewers they'll they'll be here, like all the way towards the end. Like like we have five hundred eighty three people here, but by the end of our show, it it it's not like it's dwindled down to like two hundred people. No, like most of them are gonna be here to the end. Like and consistently every single uh, live stream, no matter how long it goes, we always have like probably ninety percent of the people who who were watching they watch to the very end. You know? Yeah, we have a very long, it, and some of our, yeah. uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to end with, because if it was going on too long, wouldn't it make sense that the numbers would drop off at the end? You know, like, because people would just lose interest and be like, ah, oh, this is too long. I don't want to watch this. Thank you for that donation. The, the people who, come, uh, who like that comment are just short attention span. They're probably 19-year-old idiots or something. Well, yeah, but I, it was just because a lot of people were liking the comment. That's why I was kind of like, well, maybe we should ask the audience. I don't know. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm going to do what the audience wants, but not up to a degree. I'm going to do what I want, what he wants, what we want. We're all in this together. Uh, didn't Tony already be here by now? Look at this guy. Just never know what this Tony should always already be where he's at, but he never is. You call him up. I'm going to be where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> We get to, I get there when I get there. I get there when I get there. Where you at? I'm gonna be where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Um, but that's it. Is Anthony eating a pop tart? No, show him what it is that you're eating. Actually, I mean, it's shaped like a pop tart itself. Uh, Just show him the package so we can get on with this. Jeez, Louise, you're it. slow. It's a little protein. There we go. Bar thing. Okay, now back to me. What? What's so funny? <laughs> What? Uh, so the way you did that, you did like you even moved your hand like all slow backwards, like like <laughs> just look weird, dude. <laughs> He's got them long, creepy like Nosferatu fingers. But you could be a vampire for all I know. He could be one, folks. You don't even know. He's eating the pop tart just to scare you. Look what at you think? Do I got the Jack Skellington hands? <laughs> now that looks freaking creepy. That's that's weird. Got some creepy hands there, dude. Little, yeah. little creepy long fingers. Okay, so here's what, Salad here's, here's what we're going to talk about. Now, I have this other story I need to get to, and it's about a pig man. And I talked about that. Sounds silly unless it happened to you. And then it ain't so silly. What we could do is we could we could take this uh, Carlos uh, story and we could just make it into Tuesday's episode. Because we were going to do uh, Elves of the Inner Earth. We have so much to talk about. You ever had so much to do that you don't do anything? You just sit there? Yeah, I get that. Just like they're going, oh, that's so much to do. I get that a lot. Like I just three hours later, you ain't done nothing. <laughs> I'll wake up and be like, I, I got a bunch of stuff. I got to do this, got to do this, and, and and the whole time I'm th I'm thinking of it. I'm just like I, laying in bed like this, just staring at the, at the ceiling, thinking about doing it and not doing a damn thing. Bernard Fox says, "If you ever put butter on a pop tart, it's so freaking good." Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So there's an impression for you right there. You should put some butter in that pop tart. Make it better. Mark, I, I do not have girly hands. <laughs> I got calluses on these hands. My hands ain't soft. I have I have uh, <laughs> I have bony like Jack Skellington hands. Oh my god! See like okay. You have fighter scars. Girly hands dude, don't dude. have like. Get your freaking hands off of my camera! What are you doing? You're ruining the show totally, Brian. Uh -huh. Get your get your get your paws off my camera. And have me talk about Peter Griffin all night. Somebody asked me the other day to redo the American Dad. Uh, what's 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 his wife's name? Lo, what's her name? Lois? Not Lois. Uh, uh, Francine. Uh, Francine. No, Francine. You can't have my pop tart. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you do, I'll have to turn you into the CIA. No, it's funny. So I don't know what we could do. We 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 could we could move the Elf Inner Earth one to. The, the, the following two. And then I have a couple. Dude, I have a million people I need to record with. I got to record with a bunch of people, man. I'm telling you. So, oh, I can't. I just, there's so many people I got to record with. Uh, Seth Breedlove. I talked to him yesterday. I'm going to be doing, um, getting him on. I got to figure out how we're going to do it. Record or get him on on a Wednesday, maybe. I got to record with Hellbent Holler. Everybody loves them. I just there's and I feel like I got I got so many people I got like probably I, I'm not joking folks I probably could name 50 people right now that I need to record with. Literally I could just go through and a lot of them are, are experiencers that need to be heard you know but we're just so backed up man I mean we just got a lot going on here dude and I try but a lot of my colleagues are telling me and I, and uh, they're like you know you're on every night you know you're on every night and I'm like what does that mean they're like. Nothing. You're just on every night. Then they stare at you. You're on every night. And I'm like, I'm not on Monday and Wednesday. Are you going to hit me? Mm. I'm also not on Thursday. I'm on Blondes and Booze on Thursday. Check out Blondes and Booze. Trying to get their sub count up. Last night, BMR, I call him Boomer. Bigfoot Michigan Rob. He did a hell of a job last night after, after our show. Uh, just flipped right over to him. And I was watching him. We went to go eat at uh, one of our favorite places, Chiba Hut. Mm -hmm. uh, good sandwiches and cool people. And we, we sat there and we ate. Uh, shout out to, because I'm starting my uh, trying to eat better. 
So shout out, and I'll, I'll tell the story. But uh, I want to give a shout out to Wiz and Dougal over at uh, uh, Snap Kitchen. Great guys, nice guys, good kids, man. Um, they're in their 20s, but they were smart. They were smart dudes, man. You could tell that they weren't like the normal, you know, they weren't woke. They were awake, you know, kids, and that's good. Uh, so what do you want to do, folks? I, I can talk. We can tell this because it's going to be, I think it's going to be more than an hour. I think we should talk about Carlos's story on Tuesday. Then the following Tuesday, we'll do the earth, the elves of the inner earth. I think we should do the pig man one now because uh, uh, we'll just call him Bobby, um, the one that gave us the story. Um, what do you think? Because we did tell him and his, his uncle that we would tell that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Arkansas. We will do Carlos's story on Tuesday. I will cuz there's a lot to unwrap there. This dude gave me a whole another dump of stuff. And like I always say, if you're an inspiring podcaster, to listen to what I'm going to tell you. Always ask if there's anybody else that they know that has stories or information that can help because they do. So Carlos got me in touch with a letter another person. So I'm going to get in touch with her. She's another former member of this particular coven so yeah don't even know her name yet and he just says that he's a no female that can tell you a lot he goes because the females went through different things than the men did but what happened to carlos was was horrible he was tortured damn near killed another thing i like about carlos and i have to say this he's a big hunter thompson fan and so we were talking about fear and loathing <laughs> and he was like dude he goes my life was fear and loathing for 20 years you know <laughs> um, X says, I vote vampire was whenever and wherever. It is interesting. And folks, we're working on a book. I say we because I'm talking to the witnesses and I'm trying to get the guy from Portugal's information so I can get this into the book. It's going to be a book. I can tell you that. Unfortunately, I wrote two others that are just shelved you know, because I don't know how to finish them because I don't have the person to help me because it was a joint project. But, um, who knows? Maybe one day I'll take I'll finish those. But I guess you know. So I'm a little bit behind on the books. What I wanted to do one is a a cryptid book. I got to tell you this, and it involves many many different cases. Some of which I've gone over with my uh, my colleagues, and so we're trying to to get that done. We're gonna, we haven't even started on it. I'm you know, PRT is very busy, but we're gonna put it together and I'm gonna write it and it's gonna be good. Okay. And then we're going to get the, the vampire big book, big, done book. <laughs> and hopefully they'll release kind of like the the werewolf book released like a week or two before the Bigfoot book. That's probably what's going to happen with these. Yeah. So we will get those out to you folks. Trust me. It's going to happen. War Criminal 7. What are you doing, my friend? Tripping up on you. Uh, Mask is Mouse. Two Shadows. Miguel. Lucky. I see Maddie. I see all these people in the chat. <laughs> Joyce. Thank you, to, uh, Deadpool Kid, for that five dollars super chat. Deadpool Kid, awesome. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> so well, let's talk about this. So, so me and Anthony covered this case. We talked about it, and we were on our way to the gym the other night, and I was like, "What do you think of this?" And Anthony's like, "Dude, it's uh, it's weird, wild stuff." Be but this is not the first time we've heard of a pig man. And in fact, my brother saw one of these. He calls it a demonic pig-like entity, but he saw it in the mirror. And I believe he's been on the show and he's talked about this. It happened in Michigan. But um, <clears throat> this particular person, name is Bobby. And he got in touch with us and he says, he goes, my cousin, well, it's actually, it would be his cousin's husband, doesn't matter, but his cousins got him involved in my show. He said, I started listening to your show. And they were like, Bobby, you need to tell this man, you know, about your encounter. It happened to you. And then his uncle Greg had the same sort of weird thing happen on that property. So where it, what it is is it's in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. That's all I'm going to tell you because these people definitely want their privacy. And please don't go to their, their place because something could happen. They don't like strangers coming onto their land. So Bobby uh, got in touch with us, and he, he reached out to me, and he says, I have a pig man in camera. I saw that. I was like, it's very unusual to have, you know, that doesn't, that's not a real popular one, you know. And so I was like, dude, I got to hear what this guy's say. Little did I know what it was going to be. I mean, oh my gosh. He said, dude, he goes, the first time it happened to me, he goes, and, and I, I didn't realize this until talking to him uh, sun, Sunday 
Sunday, he said that, um, or sorry, Monday, last Monday, he said, dude, he goes, I did not realize that I wasn't the first one to see it. I thought I was. And he goes, I'll, I'll never forget. He goes, I was just sitting there, I was watching TV. He goes, in the middle of summer, it was hot as hell. We had the windows open. He goes, in our house, the way it's built, though, there's a nice cross breeze, you know. So we'll open the windows, you know, whatever. It's an old house, over 120 years old. Big house. And he says, and I'm, I'm sitting there in the den, and I'm watching television. And he's like, we did some renovations on the house, you know. And he says that my daughter comes up to me, and she says, Daddy, there's a pig outside. We, You know, there's hogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, Arkansas's mascot is the Razorback, right? And so he says, you know, there was a squealing noise. And I go, I thought, what the heck is that? He's like, and I look out the window, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And right when I see the the rump of this creature, so it had it was massive. It had to be several hundred pounds. This thing starts bat battering ramming my front door. And he says, our front door is like there's just two doors, right? And it's smashing into it. And he goes, and then my son, he goes up to the window, and he looks out the window with me, and we're both freaking out. We're like, what in the hell is that? And he goes, Dad, it's some kind of pig, some kind of hog. He goes, and so he goes, and he runs, and he goes to grab his his, his, his uh, shotgun. He says, I'm going to get my, my, my you know gun. I'm going to blow this thing. I'm going to do whatever I can. He goes, and my son, he goes, he was only 12, but he was he knew how to shoot a gun. He said, then, he goes, my daughter went and panicked and called my wife. And she's like, you know, in town, picking up food. It's Sean, Sean and Zachary, thank you for that donation. We appreciate it. And so he says, I go tell my son, I said, get back. He's starting to try to point the gun at it through the screen. And he goes, don't do that. He goes, no. He goes, Let, let's wait till we get a better angle. Because he said, I look, and this thing was moving away. And we have this wraparound porch, right? He goes, you could hear, like, the hooves. And I said, I know, I have I have a pick, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, is it walking away? And he goes, and I said, what color was it? He said, it was just like a brownish, beige, gray, whatever. He goes, I couldn't get a good, you know, because it, it, it was the lighting wasn't real good. He goes, you know. And he said, and unfortunately, the, the light right above the entryway was out. And he goes, the electric, or the electric, the electrical whatever in that house was kind of jacked up. It was an old house, and they had had it. They were having it redone at the time. And he says, "Dude," and I'm thinking, it looks like a wild hog, like a razorback. And he's like, "Why is this thing attacking my front door?" He's like, "So then I turn and I go to the other side of the house to walk, and there's like this old, old sitting room where these old houses are built." He's like, "We use it as a library. I have a bunch of books in there." And he goes, "And I get my kids. They they got to go in there and read at least one to two hours a day." where they can play video games or do anything. I said, I applaud you, sir. And I do, Bobby. I think that is a wonderful thing. And uh, I hope you're in the chat. I know, I know your handle. I don't see it. But anyway, if not, he'll catch it. But anyway, th this, this thing goes by the window. He's like, and I'm looking, and I'm like, what in the hell is that? And he said, it looks like a man. And he goes, and then I can hear, like, the hooves, like, like hooves, like walking, on, on that wraparound porch and I'm like what in the hell he goes he goes so if this hog went that way and this man whatever man like thing whatever goes the same direction he goes how is it the same thing and we talked about this Anthony about this mm -hmm. part of the story because we couldn't answer it you know like what is this the same being you know and so you got me on that one when it when it started to walk by the window he goes my son screams and he says, Dad, Dad, there's, he said, and it sounds funny saying it, but it's not funny if it happened to you. He said, there's a pig man on the, on the porch. And then his daughter, she's upstairs. This is like the weekend, right? And it's like, the, and, you know, and it was like everybody was, you know, watching TV, whatever, and everybody's having fun. He goes, I have three kids. And one of them was upstairs. My oldest daughter, she comes running downstairs. She's got her headphones in. The youngest one's telling her about it and she's just like oh whatever and he I, he goes i turn around and I, I don't scream at my kids he goes but i turn around i was like get your ass upstairs now and my daughters were like what and he goes go and so they went upstairs he goes and then i hear the door boom again this is weird right here 
So he says, dude, I didn't waste any time. He goes, I just thought this, I just stood there right in front of the door and said, this thing opens that door. I am giving it both barrels. He goes, and then I'm going to start shooting with a 45. He goes, and, and, you know, I got everything. I got two of my guns right there, ready to go. A deer rifle. He goes, I got it. I'm ready. I'm just going to start blasting this thing with everything I have. He's like, and I've never in my life dreamed that something like this could be real. But it gets weirder, let me tell you. So he says, dude, the door is starting to come open. He says, and we have a really solid door. Like, we have, it's, it's oak. It's, it's, this house is well built. Back in those days, they built houses. They weren't no punk. And this thing would have came with the house that, that I had the weird dream about the goat people, whatever. Yeah. They, they, it would have just been like, whew, and the uh -huh. walls would have fallen down. Because those walls were paper thin, you know, in those those houses out there, those big mansions. This wasn't that way. This was not. This house was tough. Think of like you know, Daniel and them's house that he grew up in. Yeah, that house is old, over a hundred, probably about one hundred twenty, um, and it is solid. And this house, he says, it, it, now he said that 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 was when this happened was like in two thousand seven or something, um, but. You know, he's it was 120 then. So how many years ago would that be now? About 130, right? Yeah, about 135 years. So this is an old house, and he said that this thing was was beating on the beating down the door, and he's like, at this point, yeah, bebop, right, Miguel? <laughs> um, but you know, he said it was beating down the door, and he's like, and then he goes, I sat there, and then I just it stopped. It just stopped. Now, I asked him this, and I ask everybody this. If you've ever talked to me, you know I'm going to ask you this question. And I said, did you pray? Did you denounce it in the name of Christ? He goes, man, he goes, I, I have to be honest. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even think about it. He goes, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. He's like, but I didn't. And I don't go to church. You know, he goes, I don't like I should. He's a Methodist, I guess, you know, whatever. But he says, that's him. He says he guesses, whatever. I said, Okay. I said, so you didn't, you didn't do anything with God or anything? You know, he says, no, I wish I would have. I didn't even think about it. He goes, I was just terrified. My kids were terrified. But my son was right there with me. And he's like, Dad, he's like, Dad, if it comes through that door, we're going to shoot it. If we go to heaven, we go together. And he says, yeah, that's right. Don't worry about it, son. We got this. But then it just stopped. And then he said, a few minutes later, his daughter comes back down the stairs disobeying him. And he goes, I got real short with her. And I said, what are you doing? And then she's in tears and she's like, dad, dad, there's this thing. And it's right below my, it's looking up at my bedroom. So he runs up the stairs and he goes up and he looks and his daughter on her, on her bedroom and on his wife's bedroom, they're, they're like two different sides of the upstairs house or the upstairs of the house. They both have like balconies. And so he said, he I goes, we, we, we have like two masters, basically. It's it really nice the way he described the house. But he said he goes out onto the balcony, and this thing is, is like down on all fours. It's wearing like not nothing on the upper body, but he said it looked like, I mean, this sounds crazy, but it looked like shorts. And he's like a ripped pants or something. Like he said, I'm not going to lie to you, because it looked like something escaped out of a lab, Right. And he said it looked like it was several hundred pounds. He goes, I didn't see the hog on four legs. It just looked like a normal hog. I don't know where it went. I didn't see it again. He goes, so I can only assume that this was the same creature. But the way that it took off, you know, that direction, you know, he said, which would have been south. And then this other thing came from that same direction almost immediately afterwards. Uh, so he goes, dude, it was just unbelievable. You know, he goes, like, I, I just never seen anything like it yeah exactly the island of dr moreau is yeah. exactly what i said too is like you know this is weird but i did tell him and you know and i said look i i deal his cousins know this and he said i said i, I take reports of humanoids in humanoids i guess and i told him i said dude there are people that see these weird things all the time oh yeah my my, my uh my, it's funny because oh well, it's not funny but uh, my sixth grade teacher, uh, she was a very nice lady. She she had uh, she had an experience with with this. Like when she was a kid, she told us in class that, that she had seen some kind of pig headed, like man like entity uh, in in her kitchen window when she was when she was a kid. Watch uh, she was washing the dishes. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it it was in the evening. It was after school. They they had eaten dinner, and well, let's 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 we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, I know about it, but so what ended up happening to this guy? He says, dude. Luckily for me, he's like, or just you know, whatever. He's like my cousin Jake. I see him. We have this long drive, and I see him coming through the drive, and I'm like, that's Jake. And he goes, and at this point, I just pointed, and I shot. He goes, and then when it when he goes, and I had my rifle, and when it got down on all fours and it began to run, he's like, I shot it again and again, and it didn't stop it. He goes, but it, the body was so hog. Like, cause it had like, all this fat on it. And it's a weird thing, very weird thing. But he said when it ran across his yard, in his yard, he goes, "It's a big yard." He goes, "My front yard is like an acre." You know, and he's the same. He's just running, and he's like, "And I'm shooting at it, and it's not doing anything, and I'm not getting any vital spots." Cause he goes, "You know where to hit a hog." I do because I live in Texas. Yeah, I know where to hit him. And this thing is off and running, and so. He said, dude, he's like, you know, Mr. Turner, he's like, what would you have done? And I said, this is going to sound, you know, kind of like, you know, like like it's a fix-all, cure-all. But I said, I would have been screaming, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus while I'm shooting, probably. <laughs> you know, and he goes, well, I, I, I didn't do that. He goes, but I, I, if it ever happens again, you definitely, I will. And it's because it didn't happen again. But get this. His cousin didn't see it, didn't see it at all. It ran in the opposite direction of the, of the headlights. His cousin gets there, and everybody's freaked out. And um, he was bringing his son, which is his uh, best friend, basically his his son, his cousin's son is his son's best friend. They're two two years apart in age. This is his first cousin's son. And then he he's like, you know, I called my wife. She's in town. And I said, look. You know, something just happened and the kids are hysterical. She goes, yes, I know. Um, I just got a call and you know, from, from one of them and blah, blah, blah. When they get back, when they all, and she gets back and, and, and you know, her sister was with her. You know, they get back, his wife, his sister-in-law. They start talking about all this. Now, this house belonged to technically her uncle, not... His uncle by blood, he calls him his uncle because him and his uncle were were on friendly terms. But his uncle, listen listen to this. This is what's really messed up. His uncle was in an insane asylum for three years. And do you know why the main reason they locked this man up was because he kept seeing a pig man. When he would go hunting out in the in those 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 arc areas out there, he said that there was an entity. Well, he didn't call it an entity. I say it. That's my words. I'm not going to put the. He said there was a being, a monster. He would say. That would, follow him around. And he said it was a pig man. And everybody was like. Okay, you know Daryl's got some issues. You know whatever. Um, that old didn't have no issues. <laughs> That's when he said, oh my gosh. He goes, dude, yes, I remember that, that that was why. He goes, it didn't even hit me until, you know, this this happened. He's like, you know, I just thought your uncle was, you know, there were some issues. And she goes, no. She's like, my uncle swore up and down that they, he saw a pig man. And she goes, and then us kids, we were camping in the front yard. They grew up in this house. She's like, we were camping in the front yard. He's like, and we heard this squealing noise. He goes, and there were six of us out in this big tent, you know, six kids. It was like four, us four and then my uncle's two two kids, the other, the different uncle, whatever. But uh, she said, dude, it was, we heard this noise and we all saw this pig-headed man-looking creature. And then it, ran toward us and we all screamed and we ran into the house and then we saw it looking, you know, and it ran back out. And then she goes, and then one day we were all by ourselves and we heard this banging on the door. She's like, and my brother Clint looks out the door and he sees this pig man. She's like, and so my parents, and you know, they just think, oh, you know, Uncle Daryl got y'all all scared and believing all this. This is nonsense because he had told them 
what he'd seen. So back in those days, this is her her great uncle, not her uncle. uncle, uncle. She said Uncle Daryl was considered to be a lunatic. And in, bless you, in the era that he grew up in, he didn't just go around telling people, "Hey, you know what I saw today while I was hunting? A pig man. I got stalked by it, and then it tried to kill me." Yeah, you get thrown in the back of a van real fast back then. Mm-hmm. So it tried to knock over his truck, and it, it came at him. And so it's it's you know, and like Joe, you're you're cracking jokes, Joe, and that's fine. You can y'all. I'm not upset with you at all. But that was the problem. And Bobby said that too. He goes, people started like calling me pig boy, whatever. I said they call me wolf boy. Same thing. I don't care. I don't give a damn. I make fun. Sullivino, thank you for that. For Hector, that's cool. Is Hector, uh, do we have the thing up for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's pinned at the top of the live chat. Okay. So, yeah, when I'll be doing, I'll be giving him a donation too. So, he, here's what I'm going to tell you they, they do not like, like, I mean, they don't know how to feel about this. They said that he was seeing things, that he was going around like, oh, there's a pig man because he had been assaulted by this thing on a couple of different occasions. But there were some times when he would claim it would be around and nobody could see it. So it wasn't that cut and dry that he just saw it in the woods and then, you know. So I asked him this. I said, do you think that her uncle Daryl, who's still alive, I said, do you think that her uncle Daryl um, was crazy? He said, dude, I don't think so. I mean, I've never, you know, he's never showed me any kind of, and he really didn't talk about it much because he knew it scared my kids. The first time he said they were little bitty and my wife was like, let's not talk about it. But he goes, my wife saw it. And they didn't take the word of the kids. They just said, oh, y'all were a bunch of kids. They just a bunch of kids. And uncle Daryl's got you all scared because, you know, the big man's going to get you. And because he talks about it incessantly now, you know, they're like, Daryl, stop. You're scaring the children. Why are you talking about this crazy stuff? It's sad. Very, very sad. Yes, I agree. Uh, Groovy chick cat. The uncle must have felt totally alone and betrayed by his family. Very sad. Yeah. It's very sad. I can't believe it. Because I want to tell y'all something. And I want In my own family. I had a great uncle named Alvin. Who got sent to a sane asylum and um i often wondered if it was you know he was not really schizophrenic if he was seeing something that was real because i was talking to a person i was working at this facility and it was one of our clients one of our big clients from several years ago but we still do work from sometimes so i can't tell you anthony knows exactly what i'm talking about it's off of uh it's over the by where i used to live mm-hmm And this poor guy, he was considered to be schizophrenic, but I was looking at a magazine and I was trying to ignore him because I heard him talking to himself. And then I heard a voice speak and I looked and I lowered the magazine. I've said this before and I saw his mouth not moving and I heard a, I I heard a voice and I'm not crazy. I don't care what anybody says. I'm crazy like a fox, crazy. And, uh, yeah, David, the guy that was working there with me, he was the tech. He was a Buddhist monk, shaman, really powerful, could do a lot of stuff. He was a Christian by faith, but Buddhist in philosophy. And um, he told me, he goes, you heard it, didn't you? And I said, yes, I did. I said, that man's not crazy. That man has got a demon attachment, demonic attachment. His name was Oscar. 
felt terrible for that man because I knew that he was under spiritual assault and I was in no place at that time in my life to help that guy in any shape or form because I was dwelling in the darkness. I got attacked by stuff regularly and I I would defend myself, you know, defend myself. But imagine how much more I could have done if I would have been living righteously. Not self-righteously like some of these pompous ass people, but doing the right thing. And I often wonder about Uncle, I call him Uncle Alvy. It's a sad thing. What he was seeing was probably real. And they punished him for years for it. And they wanted him to say, well, it didn't happen, and then we'll just let you out. Because you know what they did to me? Thanks to my stepmother poisoning the well. It's always been the way of my whole life. People, there's always some asshole poisoning the well fundamentalist Christian she went to Texas A&M she was very devout in her fundamentalism whatever and she said this is not true and I told her I said what happened to me several other people saw it why and how they were able to rationalize that when my best friend saw it and his family saw it, I have no idea. No clue. Because when I talked to the therapists and the doctors and the psychiatrists, they were just like, and one of them in particular, I'll do his voice, um, Joshua, he called me Joshua. I don't know what that... Fuck that means. Excuse my language. I'm really just, I get very emotionally upset when this, and I, I was like, that's not my name, dude, first of all. He had a weird ass last name. His nose was like, it looked like a beak, like Toucan Sam. I used to call him Toucan. <laughs> I used to get mad. I'm like, what's up, Toucan? I used to call him Sam. He didn't know what it meant. And I said, Toucan, because your nose is huge. You look like the dude from the Fruit Loops box <laughs> with your goofy bow tie. You shove all your <laughs> academia up your ass. Excuse my language, but I, and I know it's not godly to talk like that, but I'm upset when I think about it because I did a lot of, got a lot of crap for this. I said, this man exhibits anger issues. Violent outbursts. You're so angry. I said, how would you feel, Dr. A? I'll call him A. I said, how would you feel, Toucan, Dr. A? If you were in a facility for drinking problems, I don't have drinking and drug problems. He goes, well, you came in here and you were drunk. I said, yeah, they, I was a kid drinking, right? I was 14, 15, whatever. I said, yeah, because that's what teenagers do. Even then I was cognizant enough to know that's what teenagers do. We get, we get into a group and we do stuff. He's like, well, there's an issue. You're seeing things. I'm seeing things. What am I seeing? Hmm? Tell me what I'm seeing. He's like, whoa, you saw a werewolf? He's laughing. He's giggling. That's when I got up and I put my hands on his chair. I made a big mistake and I got right in his face. And then he starts screaming for the techs and the guards to come run over there. And I was like, you pompous little... He looked like... Uh, what's that dude? Uh, I'm good, Mr. Mackey. I'm good. Got yeah. a big old head. A little <laughs> skinny, little skinny toothpick body. Well, you, you're over here seeing the werewolf. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, you know, that's bad. Dr drugs are bad. And, well, drink, drinking and seeing werewolves on Halloween, that's just bad. That's all That's all bad. <laughs> what you really need to do is just, you know what, uh, uh, just not be bad. Why don't you tell Mr. Hat what you saw? Mr. Hat. <laughs> that's, that's Garrison, right? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Garrison. So I talked, and then he had another guy who would smile, and, like his eyes were almost closed when he'd smile. Joel, you know, <laughs> just, just think you're full of crap. You didn't see a werewolf. Yes, I did. And the people that saw it with me never recanted their story. They never changed it. And now here we got a guy, Daryl, over here in Arkansas, who did all this time in the loony bin. Three years, and then, he, and then he went back and did another six months. And you know what they did to him? They shocked his brain. Oh. He nearly died. And when he came home... See, they just gave me a bunch of pills. And every day they would come to me and say, 
can you just tell us what the truth is? That it was just a homeless man? They, every day was a new excuse, a new way out. They're like, and now I'm wondering who these people were. Were they part of a temple? Were they part of a cult? Because you sure were adamant that I needed to denounce it all. And not to talk about it to the other kids, because apparently they were scared of my stories. Just none of them were scared to me. They, it was just you. Dead pull kid and listen to the pig man story. I imagine Al Gore screaming at the top of his lungs and shouting, I saw man bear pig. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Remember South Park. Much love, broski. Thank you for that donation. So I told him, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to, he's going to, you're going to stay here. I said, then I guess I'm going to stay here and make, make my, make peace with my surroundings. They had me in there two different summers. My whole summers were blown away. Because they wanted me to say, yeah, lithium was one of them, Joe, that's for sure. Melaril. I didn't even take, you know what I started doing? I started holding it in my mouth and spitting it out because I don't need medication like that. I saw everybody in there zombied out on meds. I was like, I don't, I'm not, I don't belong here. And when I got put in this other facility, they said, one of the people that worked there, he was a college kid, but he was older than me. But he was like, he goes, you don't belong here. You're not one of these violent kids. These kids are, some of these kids belong here. You don't belong here. So I hatched a plan and I signed myself out. So back then, people didn't have cell phones in the early 90s. And well, some people did, but they weren't, they were like these big old, like. And so, doctor went on vacation to Vail. And I was like, well, now was my chance. So I called my mother and I got her to help me. I said, look, get me out of here. I don't belong in this place. And consequently, or subs, I guess, however you want to say it, I didn't go back into a facility. I was never locked up again for that, any of anything. I learned my lesson about popping people in the face. I learned my lesson about how not to do things and what to do, whatever. But rest assured, at one point, because I acted out so bad, because I was sick of them trying to give me drugs and trying to make me say that I didn't see what I saw, they had me on a gurney and they sent me to the PICU. You know what that is? That's a psychiatric int intensive care unit. And they kept me there. And then they put me in the quiet room where I just slept. They'd come to me and be like, well, you know, you could just tell us that what you saw didn't really happen. That would go a long ways. They were really determined about that. And I kept saying, I was like, there were other people that saw this. It wasn't just me. And Anthony, you've met them all, and they've told yeah. you. This really happened. So I know. Wasted months of my life. And all I had to do was just lie to them and tell them, yes, okay, you're right. You know what? You're right. I'm, I'm crazy. I just, I made it up. It's just, you know. But then... Somebody goes and asks the family or my friend, and he and he got locked up for two months or, or three months because drug and alcohol problems and seeing werewolves. And his family was not having it. They were like, nope, nope. And his family came to visit me while I was in there too, and they, and they comforted me. And his mother was my spiritual mother, and she hugged me tight. Her name was Martha, and she's like, you, mijo, you don't, you don't lie to these people. She's like, you tell the truth. And she tried talking to those people, and they didn't want to hear what she had to say. They wanted to believe that it was all a lie. But now looking back on it, they knew it wasn't a lie. They just wanted me to say that, which in turn would have been a lie. And so I just stuck, stuck it out. I stuck, up, I stuck by my guns. I was facing a charge for assault as a kid, right? And they seal your records, you know. And get, yeah, Scorpion, you knew her. So did my brother. She told you all the story. You've heard it. And they said, well, you know, if you just tell us the truth and just work on your, what they call it, your healing folder, whatever the, whatever the bull crap it was, they're like, then you can go home. And you won't have to go to that other facility and do your three months or whatever I was facing, whatever. Because they had reduced it because I went into that facility. So I was going to have to go through three months. But they were trying to get me to say I didn't, it didn't happen. 
And being stubborn and hard-headed, I said, no, that's fine. I'll go do my time. So I went to this, I guess you would call it like a reformatory. My life was hell. And they made sure that when I went in that all everybody knew that I was the kid that saw a werewolf, right? So you're, you're going to get into fights. First time this one kid, he comes up to me. Never forget it. You saw a werewolf? Like that's, they, they made sure, you know, it was just like, you know. And I said, dude, I don't want any trouble, man. Yeah, I don't want no trouble. You want no trouble? And there was like gangs in there. I mean, there were kids, but they were still, you know, they were gangs. And um, yeah, about well, the crack of the bat, you're fighting. But I had been in a facility way worse than that. They called it gladiator school. So I was already used to it. And of course I get thrown in what they call the hole or whatever, which is their version of this, like the ver their version of the quiet room where you get locked up, whatever. So I went through hell. But you know what? I never wavered in what I, what I saw and I never let them bully me into it and beat me into submission and tell me that I didn't see what I saw. So yeah, it jades you, it makes you jaded. You get out and somebody who will laugh at me pisses me off real quick mm -hmm. because it brings up all of those memories. I was at a club one night. I don't do this kind of thing anymore. I'm not that kind of guy. They go, oh, he thinks he's tough. That's what people love to say. I think I'm tough. I know who I am and I know what I am. But this guy says, werewolf. <laughs> and he laughed. And my brother tried to get in between us, but I had already thrown the right cross on him. Could have gotten in big trouble, Ben, but I knocked the living crap out of that dude. Didn't knock him out, but I knocked him out on his ass. And I said, don't ever, don't ever, ever laugh at me and make fun of that again. I said, I've had a belly full of that crap. I know what I saw. So this Bigfoot researcher reaches out to me, right? And he's snarky smarmy ass douchebag and what does he say he says send me your bigfoot encounter like and i'm like well i didn't have a bigfoot encounter douchebag so why how am i going to do that well you did you saw a bigfoot i said no it wasn't a bigfoot i have a bigfoot i could shove up your ass but i didn't see one and at that time especially i hadn't seen a bigfoot I don't know, maybe maybe i saw something I mean, I, I think I probably did, you know, with my wife. She saw it full on. But I said, let me tell you something, smart ass. Mr. Mr. Cool guy at the conferences and stuff and your little smarty ass. I said, I don't care what you think. You're never going to get me to say I saw a Bigfoot and I'm not sending you dick. Okay? Because I didn't see a Bigfoot. This was about three or four years ago. He was huge and still is. And of course, we would have been like that big compared to, you know, this massive brand that he was. And I said, I don't give a crap. Don't ever talk to me again. If this is how you think, don't come to me and tell me, are you trying to piss me off, dude? Just trying to get you to lie to fit his agenda. Because it's not going to happen. And so there's a lot of people who've seen Bigfoot. I'm not one of them, not at that time. So go find those people. So what happened with this guy? His uncle ends up being crazy, being pronounced as a, a, a lunatic. And Bobby tells me he's, sounds like a pretty tough guy. He's a grown man, you know. He broke down. And he says, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm a sensitive man. He goes, I'm, 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 I consider myself to be a tough man, you know. He said, but I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. He goes, I broke down and I cried and I'm crying right now. And he was telling me. And he says, I hope you don't mind. You give me a minute. I said, no problem, buddy. You call me back when you're ready. About an hour goes by, not even an hour. He calls me back and he says, I'm ready to go. 
And so I opened up to him and his wife, very nice lady. And I told him what happened to me as a kid. I don't know these people, but I'm up here telling you right here for the whole world to, to hear. This is my story. I don't balk. I don't run from a fight. I don't run from misbehavior. People making these saying mean little naughty things and running around and whispering in people's ear. You're, you're, who cares? At the end of the day, you'll become a footnote in this community and we'll be on top. Because honesty wins the day. You don't have to defend the truth. It defends itself. So what ends up happening? This person comes home. Her uncle, she's like, I'll never forget it. And she was in tears. I could tell she was crying when she was telling me this. And then, then she, I just said, let it out. I know you're... She's like, he was zapped into another dimension. She said he would sit there and just stare out the balcony, staring out into space, like just... And she said, though, this is, this is a good thing. There's a happy ending to this. For me, too. Christ is the Redeemer. God knows the truth. He doesn't need to be convinced. And this is what she said. She says, you know what we did, Mr. Turner? And I said, call me Wolf. She says, Wolf? She's like, we got together, a bunch of us from our church. And she's like, I couldn't stand to see my uncle like that. He was almost brain dead. She's like, I knew he was telling the truth. I saw it as a kid. It was real. So we laid hands on him. She said, there was a dozen of us just putting our hands on him and we prayed. It's the first time we did it, nothing happened. So we all went downstairs and we prayed and we went back upstairs and we did it again. And she said, and then after church, that's following Sunday, he started talking. He started, you know, and they were saying he hadn't eaten. He wasn't eating. So they thought he was going to die. That's why they let him out. So he could go home and die in peace. Shame. Shameful thing. And so, she said, the whole church came over to the house. And everybody was there praying, and we were singing. And the next thing you know, he clapped. And then he started to become coherent and look around and not just staring off into space. And she says, and now, today, he's old, he's very old, old, old man, very, very um, up there in years, but he's still alive. And he never changed his story. And I told her, I said, me neither. And I never will. Why? Because you're supposed to fit in. I know what happened to me last night, and I know what I saw that day, that night. And they were going to change my story to fit someone else's narrative and make it okay. To just, no, 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 we're not doing that. And I'm sorry if you're an atheist or whatever, but you know what? I'm going to tell you something right now. One day you will face the fact that there is a God and Christ is Lord, and you will have to accept that. Not to get all preachy, like people always say, he's always preaching, you know, too bad. My show. But the bottom line is this. God healed that man. He was in a wheelchair and he couldn't walk. And he never, to this day, I, I couldn't talk to him. He can't really, he can barely talk. But that man saw what he saw and he never backed down and never changed his story and said, okay, okay, I didn't, I'm, I'm good. And they tortured him, basically almost killed him. So I'm sorry if I get a little emotional. Sorry, not sorry, but the truth is the truth.
Ron, I don't think that's very appropriate. Can you get rid of that comment, please? You don't got to hide him or kick him out, but just let's not have that. This is not a jokey time right now. Okay. So that is that story, and it is, I knew it was going to be an emotional one, and it is, it was, um, it was hard to listen to. And they don't really, as a family, they don't really retell that story much because they don't, people make fun of it and they make fun of them and they make fun of this guy. And so honestly, I thank God for what happened to me that night. I thank God that I saw what I saw. And I used to sit there and I would pray to God when I was in these facilities and in these places. And a lot, some of it was my own fault for being a violent, angry kid and acting out. I'm not going to make no bones about it. I was, nothing worked. They put me in the scared straight program. That didn't help. I couldn't stop knocking the hell out of people. Like a riot war criminal, they won't be making fun in the end. They're all going to come to the realization because it doesn't matter where you believe the Old Testament says this or it says that. It doesn't matter. The end is the same. The result is always the same. That's what you always say, Anthony, the most pragmatic person I know. Yeah. So was your stepdad, Tony. Say hi to everybody, Tony. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So when you, when you look at this thing, this situation here, the result, the end result is going to be the same. You don't believe? That's fine. Don't believe. But there will become a day when you are going to have to face the facts of what is real. The spirit world is very real. These entities, these beings, these creatures, these demons, they exist. Now, whether it was some blue-skinned, ram-headed looking creature or this hog-head looking entity, whatever, they exist. What they are, we don't know. I'm not going to sit up here and pretend to have the answers because I don't know. I don't even know what that was that I saw last night. I don't know what that was. All I know is I choked the hell out of it. But I can tell you this. I'm not going to live my life in fear, and I'm not going to lie and say that I didn't see what I saw. Because I've talked to multiple people who've told me that that's what they want them to do. Basically to lie. They're not lying about their encounters. They're being told to lie that they didn't see what they saw. Face in the crowd, you're right. I may have philosophical differences with some people. But it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're all going to deal with it. I never turned... I used to talk to God. I would be, I would pray to God, be like, God, please, um, why am I in here? I don't belong here, you know, but obviously God thought otherwise. Because all of that pain and all of that suffering and everything I've gone through has been a slow march up to this point to lead me into the position that I'm in now to talk to you. It is my duty, it is my job to tell these people, give them a voice. There's a lot of people who would love to tell their story, but they don't want to say it themselves or they can't or they get made fun of. And and his wife was very, you know, Bobby's wife was like, she's like, Mr. Turner. And I, she kept calling me that. And I said, please just call me Wolf. She's like, she said, a wolf is a big, mean animal. That does, I don't think you're that way. I said, no, I can be. I'm usually pretty nice, but I can be, I can be a wolf. You know, what time is it now, Mr. Wolf? But people make me that way because they don't stop with the bull. Not totally But I can tell you this. I told her, I said, Look, there's always gonna be people that are gonna make fun of people like us. But I promise you they're not gonna say it to my face. And I told her, I said, I know what your family, your family's endured. I can't even imagine what your uncle he went through. But bless you for being good to him, taking him into your house. 
laying hands on him and bringing him back to reality. This reality, which maybe isn't even the right reality. I don't know. But I can tell you right now, 100%, that everybody who suffers through this, you're not alone. You're not alone. Come to me. Tell me your story. I'll retell your story. If you can't do it, I'll do it for you. And let them laugh. Let them say whatever they want because they didn't go through what you did. And I want to say something to the audience today. There were several people in here that made jokes and made, made funny jokes, whatever. And I get that not everybody was trying to be cute or funny, whatever. Um, but it is hurtful because if they're watching right now, well, it's not polite. Because they've suffered enough, and so have I. Somebody says they can't hear me. You can't hear me? Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, Edward, first off, that, that's, that's, that's not a very polite way to say that. And secondly, if you can't hear him, it's on your end because no one else is complaining. So I suggest you check your hardware, check things on your end before you start making little snarky comments. All right, thanks. Bye. And Hunter, 10, 10 uh, 14, thank you for that donation. We appreciate it. Scorpion, I just said that. Scorpion says, I've seen Wolf go from, what did he say? I've seen Wolf go from hitting someone so hard that they don't know where they are to giving someone money at the store because they're short. And one thing Scorpion said the other day, which is, you know, we don't expect people to believe or understand or know where we came. You don't know. You just don't. I mean, and, and, and I got to understand that and respect that. You just don't. You weren't there. Didn't happen to you. And you don't know about my past or what I've been through or what I can do or what I'm capable of. You don't. I'm just some guy up here talking. So people love to say, take shots. But until you face the monster, you don't know. And once you've been to hell and back, then you can say something. Deadpool Kid, once again, thank you for the donation. He says, hey, brother, just a conspiracy hypothesis. Do you think these communities and districts have handlers across the country trying to suppress the encounters and blackmail the witnesses to silence, stay strong? Well, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. There's just been too many things. That I've talked to, if you, if you, folks, let me tell you something. This isn't a snarky comment against the listeners because I love you guys. That's why you're here. But if, if there's people who think that they know more than they do, and you don't. Because I talk to tons of content creators. Tons of them. Thank you for that donation, Nicholas Bravo. 20th Super on Alive. Thank you. And who else don't know is? What else was? Yeah, Hunter. Uh, so Deadpool Kid and Travis. Uh, Travis. Uh, Perrick. Perrick. Thank you, Travis, for that donation. Thank you, Nicholas. There are... A ton of creators that I talk to on a regular basis, whether we message each other or we call each other or whatever. And I'm going to tell you this. They throw some of the stories out there to me and they'll tell me, what do you think of this? And we'll go back and forth theorizing, postulating on theories. Who knows? But if you talk to as many people as I do and you talk to all these other content creators and authors... And listen to the stories that they get. Listen to what they, 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 they hear. Then you will understand where I'm coming from. And don't think that you know until you know. You don't know. But the average listener has no clue what's on, up here, what I have up here, what, what is going on. I'm not crazy. I'm not a crazy person. I promise you. Bad circumstances, yeah, but I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. And in fact, we were talking about Linda earlier. She That was the name of one of her books. I've said it before. I know what I saw. And I think that one of the things that bothers me more than anything else, the exact, Joanne just says it right here. What did she just say? She says, never laugh at someone's misfortune until you've walked in their shoes. Tomorrow is never promised to us. 
You never know what might happen to you. There you go. I don't even need to say it. Thank you, Joanne, for that. Joanne is an awesome individual. Mm -hmm. JFA says, no hard feelings. I tend to take on tragedy obstacles with humor. I do too, but there's there's a time when you got to say, come on, guys, you know. It helps melt away anxiety and helps focus me on um, helps me focus on a solution without feeling irritable, or agitated, wishing PRT the best. And JFA, you're awesome too. Thank you for that donation. He's right. I mean, he or she. I don't know if you're he or she. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> it's the truth. I do it too. I use uh, uh, you know. But the pig jokes were were kind of like, come on, man, because I, I know maybe you don't, but the family's been through enough. They were apprehensive even having me tell it. Oh, off-roader's back. And uh, I'll get to that in just one second, off-roader. But thank you for that donation. But, you know, Bobby even said that his wife, he didn't think his wife was going to watch because she thought that there would be a bunch of people making fun. And it's too emotional for her. And they were talking about it, and people were joking. And I almost didn't say I almost saved it for a Tuesday so I could, didn't have to, you know, do it live. So there's that. Read that, please. Alfredo says, hey, guys, sorry to ask again. I couldn't hang around Friday after I sent the last Super Chat, uh, which thank you for that one, uh, by the way. Oh, that was very generous of you. Uh, but did Gerald say what's going on with the missing 411 in our national forests or parks? Hope this helps with new equipment. Oh, man. Bad news. Oh, well. Oh, well. It never fails. But we keep smiling, don't we? The parks and, you know what, The I want to do a little more into that off-roader because I did, we touched on it a little bit. And Gerald is the one who told, tells me that he believed, and this is just a short, quick answer, but we did talk about it a little bit, and I said, you know, when people go missing into the in the woods, which I didn't say now, I didn't, I don't believe I said anything about, uh, you know, those books or the missing four one one. I didn't say anything about that, but I said, you know, going missing, and I did mention that people go missing in state and national parks. But I didn't say anything about the books, and uh, what he told me was that absolutely, I mean, that there he thinks that those, it's very possible. Um that they could be being taken by different types of entities. And he said that knowing what he knows, <clears throat> it's probably, you know, some of his colleagues. And if not, then he said, you know, or former colleagues is my words, not his, he said former, you know, coven members, whatever. But, um, also, you know, I, I, I think that it could still be other, other beings too. Oh yeah. I mean, you have Bigfoot, you have reptilians, you have, elves you know and, and it, it sounds it sounds I, see, I know how it sounds probably to the average person they're sitting here looking at they've never been exposed to this and like I, I quote Bane from Batman he's like you know he goes to the uninitiated right but we are initiated <laughs> yeah you know and then he breaks Batman's back lovely God, just breaks his back rich man's son how does that feel hmm Sorry, folks. Let's channel my inner Bane. <laughs> Sorry, Batman. I never felt any pity for that dude. Self-righteous jerk. Batman. <laughs> keeps putting the keeps putting the Joker in the exact same place that he knows to, to escape from. Exactly how to get out every time. But then he goes and kills Superman. That that was a great one there. That was awesome. So glad you did that. He's well, putting in real work and you're killing him. This this is this this right here is exactly like the people that are messing with us. He needs to be stopped. He's got too much power. <laughs> Truth be told, I just want to have control of his show and I don't. That's what it is. I stop me by any means necessary. Because you're judge, jury, and executioner, right? Sarah Jane says, thank you for speaking truth to power. You give us courage to share our truth no matter how difficult. You've helped me immensely. Is the medal you showed earlier a St. Benedict medal? Yes, it is. And you can also get these online from the order, the Benedictine monks, and they are blessed. 
This one's not, but you know, you can also do it yourself if you feel like you're competent enough to do that. I believe in the power of Christ 100%. I'm going to tell you this. People ask me about fear. And I don't, I'm not daredevil. I'm not the man without fear, if you know who that is. Hmm. You know? But I'll tell you this. I don't live my life in fear. I don't walk around in fear. I fear for Anthony and Tony and Nelly, my brother, my, my best friends. I don't fear for myself because when I die, I'm not worrying, oh, well, I'm going to go to heaven, I'm going to go to hell. I don't waste my time worrying about that because I do what I'm supposed to be doing. And if it doesn't work out, well, it doesn't work out. And I'm not a sociopath. I worry about my, my life, where it's headed, where it's going. I lay there sometimes thinking, I don't think I'm going to make it, you know. But I know this, and everything I do and everything, God's got me. And he knows that we're flawed beings. That's why he's trying to help us. We're not perfect. So, tripping up when you says, when you have the armor of God, no fear. That's Satan wants. That's right. Mm -hmm. No fear. I don't, I don't, I'm not afraid. I'll tell you a quick story about this. I, I, years ago, when I was involved in doing stupid crap, I'm not going to get more than that. A young man was probably in his early 20s. I was in my mid to late 20s. Put a gun to my head. My brother was standing behind him, like behind me. And they were all yelling at each other. We did two groups of people. One was yelling at us. We were yelling back at them. And I leaned. This is a true story. I leaned in. And I had a lot less to live for back then. It was before I basically was taking care of my boys. And I put my head forehead to his gun and I started talking to this kid and back in the day I had a reputation back in the day I wasn't famous no I was infamous and a lot of people around here knew who I was by my nickname Wolf and that, this isn't my gang banger days as Doucher said no this is the truth this is what happened and I told that guy I said go ahead and shoot me and enjoy prison for the rest of your life I said how old are you 21 22 he was helping out his uncle because his uncle didn't like me. I was poop cock ahead. And we had put a boot in their ass because they were gangbangers. And I said, go ahead, pull the trigger, boy. Pull it. Do it. And then go to prison and tell everybody you're the guy that shot me because you'll never be me. You're just going to be the guy that shot me. And everybody in the joint's probably going to know who you are. But all you're going to be, and then you're going to have to prove yourself every day and fight. I said, but you can't fight, but that's why you got your gun out, can you? You're scared. I said, now granted, you're half my size. That's why you got your gun out. I was talking mad crap to this dude. And I'll never forget, it was like it was yesterday. It was like 20-something years ago. And I told him, go ahead, pull the trigger. He's like, I'll do it, man. I'll freaking do it. I said, don't, don't tempt me, Holmes, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm tempting you. I'm telling you to do it. Do it. And he didn't. And everybody grabbed him and pulled him away and calmed him down and fanned him away. Like, I'm like, I don't give a crap about this dude or any of you other putos. You're not scaring me. Everybody had guns. They had guns. He had guns. Everybody got guns. Except me. Mine was not pulled out. And everybody asked me the same thing. My friend Noka, he asked me. He went to prison for eight years. Noka's a good friend of mine. When Noka comes to me, he's African-American, good friend of mine, one of my brothers. He comes to me, he says, were you scared, dog? I said, yeah, I was scared. But I wasn't. I was scared in one way. That I wasn't going to be there to help my family. My mother was not doing good at that time. But what did I have to live for, really? I didn't care. And who knows where I would have gone if I'd have died right then and there. So think of it this way. If I wasn't scared to die then, it was spiritually, soul-wise, why would I be scared now when I've turned my life back over to God? 
when I am spiritually fulfilled. There's no doubts. And you shouldn't have that doubt either. You don't need to go and put your head up to somebody that's doing something crazy like that. So, get your life right with God so you don't have to worry and be afraid. So if something does happen to you, God forbid, you're driving to work and you don't make it home. You know where you're going to spend eternity. Say the prayer. As Christ has come into your heart, forgive you for all your sins. Admit to that you're a sinner. You can do it. Every time I talk about this, I start losing people. They don't want to hear it. But it's the truth. That's me. It's my beliefs. I'm not going to make you do anything because I can't make you do anything. It's up to you. Do you want that peace? I know the nature of reality. Most people don't. I'm fortunate enough to have been able to interview hundreds of people, thousands of people. I'm fortunate enough to pour over thousands and thousands of cases. I know the truth. Those are seeking the truth. There's a place you can find it. Go to Christ. That's all I can tell you. Say that to the dad. So anyways, folks. EO, the DJ, says, I recently found you. Is, he said EO, right? Yeah, recently yes, found EO. your show. Love your work. Reminds me of Art Bell. I appreciate it, man. I hope you stick with me. I know a lot of people don't like the preaching and whatever, and they say that I'm proselytizing. But I catch it from both ends, folks. I'm getting, I'm getting attacked by fundamentalists who say that I'm preaching wrong and that I'm leading people to hell. And I must be stopped. And then I catch it from the atheists, and I catch it from all the other people who say he preaches too much. But I'll leave you with this. That's what I like to say. People who always want to want to complain about the preacher, right? You know, they're like, sometimes his voice is just too quiet. Sometimes it's just too loud. He needs to have more dignity, or else he's way too proud. All the time, right? That's how it is. Everybody's going to have their own little take on you. And then they think that they own you. And they should tell you because they gave you a donation or whatever. Or you should do this or you should do that. And instead, maybe they should just be quiet and let you do what you got to do. Right? So tonight, you had a lot to think about. This hog swine. Let's just call him the swine man because it sounds better than saying pig man. Yeah. The swine man. I mean, oh, I still have to get... Uh... Tell you what happened to we'll my do it. medical teacher. Swine man, and then we have this blue goat man looking thing. We're going to explore that more because that also ties into the elves of the inner earth. Got a couple of stories. A guy named Earl reached out to me. Crazy what happened to him. They're real. Believe me. We talked about it last night. Go back and listen to last night's show with Nick Willard. Everything goes back to the fae for him, and it could be these... That could be what these demons are. Go check it out. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to say this. What I said about that, those, that, that, that is not a hoax. First comment on there. Oh, that's been proven to be hoax. It ain't been proven to be shit, dude. Okay. Sorry, but that's not a hoax. They have found human DNA in, the, in that meat. And they found teeth and other things. You think I'm joking. So you can believe what you want. They'll tell you it's a big old hoax, but it's not. I promise you it's not. And Finkelstein did say all that stuff. And it wasn't no setup. If you knew who he was, he was a very powerful businessman in New York. Wasn't no, wasn't no ringer. His colleagues, of course, denounced him because they don't want him because he was blabbing. But like he said, they're not going to do anything. You won't do anything. He goes, we'll feed you your own children and you won't do anything about it. That's what he said. The hoax. And we'll explore that a lot more once we get onto the other platform, too. I mean, he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. Horrible, nasty, disgusting individual, but he was telling you the truth. He says, I'm not a liar. I'm telling you the truth. A.B. Finkelstein of New York. 
He says that very proudly he was a Luciferian. But he passed away, right? And where do you think he is now? Was it worth it, maybe? I don't know. Can you hear me talking from down there in the depths? You murderer. All right, folks. These encounters almost sound like a feeding ground for these entities, whether it's flesh or psychic. This is Deadpool Kid again, especially with the 411 cases, the powers of the B allowed this so these beings don't hunt in larger areas. Sorry that you had to go through the trauma, man. We all go through our own hell, don't we? I don't think mine's any more powerful than anybody else's. I'm sure everybody in this audience has gone through hell. What happened to me, though, isn't any worse or better. It's just that I what I what I went through it for. And it could have stopped like that if I would have just said, okay, okay, all right, I lied. I, I, I didn't see a werewolf. I, I'm just, whatever. Anyways, take it away, Anthony, and then we'll close shop. Okay, yeah, so um, I, I remember when I was in sixth grade, I had this teacher, she was a really nice lady, real down to earth, and she, she never talked about any kind of like weird or bad things happening to her. And I don't even know how we got on the subject, but she, for whatever reason, she started sharing th this this thing that happened to her when she was a little girl. Um, she, her, her family had sat down, they ate dinner. You know, and when when you finish dinner and, and you're the kid, it's your job to do the dishes. So Not nowadays. Well... <laughs> Well, yeah, now in a normal household, in a correct yeah. household, we were all of us yeah. in this at this table, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now the kid that just uh, plays on their iPad and or eats dinner in their room or gets with their way, whatever. But anyway, no, it's DoorDash now. Back back in the days when things were normal, um, she she was a little girl, and and she was she was doing the dishes. It was nighttime, and. You know how it's very common for for uh, for there to be a window right there by the by the kitchen sink. Well, she said that for whatever reason she 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 opened this she opened the curtain, and and what she saw in the window was this. She said she saw like this really big fat pig pig's head, and she said that the the the, the head mostly filled like it mostly filled the window it was such a just a big big large pig head and she said it, it looked like it, it almost looked like it had the body of a of a man but she couldn't really tell it was most, mostly this pig head in the window she said she said the eyes were were glowing red that it had like these piercing red glowing eyes and and that it was it was staring at her it, it was just in the window looking at her, watching her do the dishes, and her reaction immediately, of course, was to scream her, scream her head off. She ran, she ran out, and she went to her parents' room and, and told, told them what she saw. Well, of course, they, their perception was that our daughter is trying to get out of doing the dishes. She's just making up a story. She, she, just, do, she just doesn't want to deal with it. And so, and so she she took them back to the kitchen to show her what what they saw, what she saw, and it wasn't there. Well, th they they just sent her to bed. They, they were upset with her. They didn't believe her. Um, and she said that the, that the next day she she went outside to see to see like how far off the ground that window was, and she, she said that it was it was probably like seven feet off of the ground. But see, the the really messed up part is that she said that this was before the Amityville Horror came out. When it came out, she went to go see it, and and that scene in the in the Amityville Horror, it, uh, where where there's this pig head with red eyes in the window, she said that is exactly what she saw, like to a T. She said she said when I saw that, it it. It, it was like it was happening to me again, and I couldn't take it because there was no difference between that and what I saw. And she was like, "When, when I tell when I tell people that that I saw what uh, what I saw, they automatically think that I was a kid who watched Amityville Horror first, and then I saw that in the window." No, it was the other way around. And looking back on it, it's kind of sad because 
I could tell that she, it was something that she never really got any answers or closure on because, you know, it's the, the shows like this weren't around, that there wasn't a community around this stuff. She didn't have access to any any network of people or information who could have helped her. Nothing. So, so Maddie... And nobody believed her. Yeah, I know. Nobody believed her. Maddie in the chat, are, are, kid, are you serious? She says, I've never seen the Amityville Horror. You were on the phone with me and Garitano when I when Garitano was talking about that house being up for sale. And he kind of was like, hey, it's really not that bad of a price. I think he was trying to pitch it to me to maybe go in on it with him. And I said, look, I got a, I got a, a lot of other stuff I got to take care of. Can't be buying Amity to Horror House. <laughs> Unless y'all want to like do a fundraiser and let's buy it for PRT. Sounds like a plan. I'm down. Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't need a demon house. What are you going to do with portfolio? it? Portfolio. Oh, okay. You know, though, Jeez. real quickly on that, Garitano had the right idea, though. I, I think that when, when uh, what's his name, DeFeo, when he did what he did, the people that moved in afterwards, the Lutzes, they, 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 they kept those beds there. And then the people after that, they moved everything out, everything, started over. And that may be why they didn't have the same problems that the Lutzes did. Uh, that's Garitano's uh, theory on that. I think he's right. It could be. Because blood and emotions saturate the environment. The question that I had, though, about this swine man, whatever, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, after this, somebody will probably send me a story saying they've heard about something like this. And um, <clears throat> so you got to wonder about this swine man thing. You know, it was like if it came back after all those years. Yeah. Why? Why? And then they haven't seen it again since. Mm. It's always these entities. They just like pop in every once in a while. That are like truly bizarre. Yeah, like the dog man that Nelly saw. Mm -hmm. She said that they found a planchette and her sister were like, you know, they, it was it belonged to a Ouija board. And then later that thing popped into the, the house and looked like it was looking for someone. If you haven't heard Nelly's encounter, it's pretty, yeah, it's, it's a trip. I, I, I told it on DER. I've told a lot of people's encounters on DER, but, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Um, but also, I mean, it makes that's what makes me believe that, like, the time difference is, like, significant to, in, in between if these are dimensional beings. Because that would, would kind of explain why they only pop in every once in a while. Because it... For them, it might still just be like a couple seconds, and for us, it might be like twenty years or ten years or however long. Mm -hmm. What is D talking about? Scorpion and I would end up living there. Scorpion's like, I got my own apartment maybe, over there. <laughs> over there, fighting Queen Boudica. Well, maybe because they just wouldn't be scared or care about. Well, Scorpion the, would the, go they, to sleep. They, up they just go. Yeah, Scorpion's they just go weird because I feel like he's just like oh, I don't want to deal with it. They'd get woken up by, by blood curdling screams, and they, they, they just they might pop their head up all bleary eyed for a second. Mm, mm, mm. They, are, they they lived with me in that haunted house down in South Austin, and I I, I, I was talking to both of them the other day. We were all on the phone together talking, all three of us, and uh, who else was on the phone with us? It was somebody else on the phone with us. Um, but we were all talking, and um, oh, I think it was Brian. Brian was on the phone with us. So and he's from the old days. I've known him for 22 years, 23 years. And it's it's crazy. We were talking about that house. And like like my brother said, he goes, dude, once you've been through all that, who cares? It's like, dude, <laughs> once you've been grabbed out of bed, once you've seen things levitate and float, and you've seen a black shadow thing jump in and out of a mirror, who gives a crap? And that's what I was actually, when Garitano was on the phone, Maddie, you were on the phone with us. We were on the phone talking to Garitano. And we talked a little bit about that, and Garitano's like, yeah, dude, I mean, you know, once you've been through all this crap, you know, I mean, I mean, it's just like, who cares, you know? It's like uh, a, a friend of mine, he's a com an aspiring comedian, and um, I don't want to say too much, because he's, he's, he's got a show coming out pretty soon, it's going to be, and he's a comedian, and a lot of people know who he is. But he was telling me one of his jokes, and he was talking about ghosts. And he says, what do you think about this? And he called me up. I've known this guy for years. And he says, what do you think about this joke about ghosts? And he said, dude, you know, you're, you're laying there in bed, and he goes, you're worrying about your, 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 your mortgage and your taxes and, you know, 
your kids, college, all of those, and then you see a ghost. And he's like, he made it a joke, like he's very flippant about it, like, who cares? Like, dude, go haunt someone else. I got my own damn problems. You know what I mean? Like, but I told him, I said, I think there's a comedian that's already done that. I got to look at some research about that. But um, yeah, it was like, who cares? Like, you're worried about real stuff, you know, like, who cares? But I said, yeah, but it gets, it gets different though. And I told him, I said, it's a little different whenever you're dealing with demonic, you know, a ghost. Yeah, that's one thing. This is, D says, the pillow shocking the side of my face was the best. <laughs> yeah. Him and Willie both had that same thing happen in that particular room. And in that room, they heard scratching on the walls. And we didn't have animals that would have done that. It was weird, man. I don't know. Scorpion said, quiet down. I'm trying to sleep. That's what I would say. Yeah. Well, when the Scorpion was over at uh, Travis' house, which doesn't exist anymore, so we can say now because it doesn't exist. But, uh, yeah, he, he saw some of the same weird phenomena that I did. And I went over there one night. He was asleep. <laughs> you know? But over there, they said, I mean, as long as you're inside, nobody breaks in. They didn't care. Like, some places will let you. They'll just be like, just be inside because you're going to have to be there for hours and hours. And they don't care. Just as long as you hear somebody break in or try to, you stop them. And that was one of them. He chose to go inside. I wouldn't go inside. I was like, <clears throat> All right, folks, I'm going to head out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for everybody that donated. We appreciate it. We do need to get this cameras and this equipment and get this stuff going. Uh, Matt Durgo did say he was sending us some stuff, but I don't know what it is and I haven't gotten it yet. So I can't, I don't want to say, oh, we got it, folks, because we still need a whole lot of other stuff. But there's a whole lot we got to do. And we are going to, to probably create a, uh, what is that thing called when you, when you, I forgot what they call Kickstarter. Is it starter or kickstart? I don't know. Oh, Kickstarter. Kickstarter, you know. Um, Kickstarter is for like, like projects that you're developing. Yeah, it's for the board game. Yeah. Because we need to get the money together to get it done. We, we it's, it's an awesome game. We just got to get it marketed, get it uh, mass produced. So, you know, folks, so we need help with that. That's what we're doing. So all of this goes towards all the PRT things we got to do to make your life better. Because hopefully PRT is helping in that department. People message us all the time. They tell us they love what we do. Well, we love you. And we appreciate the help. Thank you and good night.